Hey guys, I'm Mike. Hey, I'm Josh. And welcome to Persian Alien 8th Edition 40k Bat Wrap. Tonight we have Tyranids versus Imperial Guard. Uh, first time that we've had either of these armies on display here at Persian Alien, so we're looking to kind of get a lot of units on the board and see how they interact with each other. Yeah, so today we're actually playing the old Persian War Persian Alien mission, ironically, um, now called No Mercy. Uh, pretty much just kill points here, lined up in a Dawn of War deployment. Um, really looking forward to. Uh, Wiping some mids off the board. Uh, Tyranid's gonna eat some face. So we'll see. This game is gonna be uh, great. We both have very aggressive lists, so this is probably gonna be a in your face over by turn two, turn three, yeah. but you never know. Might end up with a whole turn six game by the end of it, depending on how things go. So uh, we'll get it started. Enjoy the show. So, quick breakdown of all of our units' deployment. Um, I won the turn to go first. Um, just as a heads up, also, Josh failed to seize the initiative, so we're going to go through all of our deployment. I'm currently looking at 400, or 1,496 points, 1,496. My power level's at 75, in case you're looking at that part as well. Um, starting over here, I've got a unit of 5 G and Steelers acting as my troop. Over here, you can see that I've got a unit of Venom Thropes. Uh, my Venom Thropes are currently being painted right now and being touched up, so these two lictors right here are standing in for Venom Thropes, but it's a unit of three Venom Thropes. Next to the Venom Thrope, I have my Exocrine, just kitted out normally with a Bioplasma Cannon and just the stock powerful limbs. Up top, I've got a Hive Crone, fully kitted out with everything that's normal. I've got a uh, Hive Tyrant that is with the four Devourers with the Maggots, so it's a little bit different than 7th edition. I have a second Hive Crone to get a little bit more air support, everything killed out as normal. Lastly on the board, I have a unit of 10 Hormagons acting as another little scurry troop. Off the board, I have a Moloch, a Tyrannocyte, and Swarmlord who is chilling out in that Tyrannocyte ready to eat some faces. So, about ready to get going. This is my deployment. Thank God there's no templates because I am super clustered up. Alright guys, going to walk you through my deployment of Astromental Tower real quick. Um, you know, just to let you know I'm at 1457 in points, but my power level is a little bit higher at 92. So, you know, walking off to the left to right here, I got my infantry squad in the building here. Um, just 10 regular guys with the, the sergeant in there. Uh, down below here, we got three Bulgrins with the power mauls and brute shields. Um, running with a Minister and priest, he'll be uh, kind of running behind there, since, you know, obviously not, they're not part of the unit now. Behind the Bulgrins, we have two Wyverns uh, deployed within six inches of each other here just with the, the typical heavy bolters out front. In front of those wyverns, we have a executioner with the plasma uh, cannon on front, and then the two plasmas on the side and the last cannon as well. Um, behind the executioner, we have the fateful uh, void shield here, which gives it a uh, four up invuln saved, everything within 12 inches now. Uh, in front of the void shield, we actually have Pask um, in the Punisher with uh, three heavy bolters. Um, in the spontoons and uh, front hull there. In the building next to the Void Shield and Pask, we have another infantry squad. Um, same as the other one, except for now in this one we have an auto cannon team. Uh, next to that, we have a just regular battle cannon, uh, Lehman Russ, with a heavy bolter out front there. And then uh, lastly, uh, besides the flyer here, we have a Torox with the, the dual. Uh, uh, auto cannons there. And then inside the Torox, we actually have uh, a group of seven Scions, um, just with their regular hotshot LAS guns, uh, with two Maltas as well. And then lastly, we have the Valkyrie over here, uh, just kitted out with its normal uh, loadout. Besides, I swapped out the multi laser for a LAS cannon. And that's pretty much it, ready to uh, start shooting at some nids. All right, Tyranids turn one, movement phase. A lot of aggressive movement out of the Tyranids. I don't like this, man. Got a full 30-inch move with the Hive Crone, so we're getting up nice and close. 30-inch movement over here. I love this being able to kind of just fly and then charge things. So get my tanks in Overwatch now, though. I know it's a complete different ball game right now. Ooh, my 
Hormigons, 8 inches. Sorry I'm not talking this out. I honestly don't really care about a lot of these guys in the back. The real combat's going to be way far forward, so I'm kind of just slapping everything forward real quick. Rolling my advance number. So, advancing two more. So just going the extra two. Now, if you were smarter than I was, you can actually just roll this all at the same time, but I'm still kind of learning from 7th edition, and I'm used to rolling it later, but at least it's in the safe, same phase this time around. And then I'm going to also be advancing my Gene Stealers. Another two. So do a full 10 inches forward. Oh, yeah, basically nice. an eight. And then pro tip for Tyranids, with your Venom Thropes, you can kind of daisy chain some guys back. That way you stay in that nice Venom Thrope range. And then it is the end of my movement phase, so I'm actually going to be bringing my Tyrannocyte down. And if Josh won't mind, can you get yeah, that to within like 10 nine. of pass, like back behind yeah, there? Yeah, you want it. It's 9 inches away. Right? Yeah. Alright, that's good. And then <laughs> out comes Mr. Beautiful himself. Swarmy Mr. Swarm Swarm. And then what we'll also do is we're actually going to leave the Moloch in reserve for right... Hmm, do I want to? No, we'll actually bring the Moloch down as well. So Josh, can you put your Moloch over there yeah. by your Torox, just right behind it, two inches within your the Lehman Russ? Oh, he can be within two inches? Oh yeah, he's got oh, some special, man, special man. damage. Uh, two inches of the Torox and two inches of the Lehman Russ, if you sure, don't mind. Sure. Alright, so we're going to take advantage of the Moloch special rules, so when it pops up from below, uh, you roll a dice for any unit that's within 2 inches. On a roll of 1, nothing happens. On a 2 through 5, it is going to end up doing a mortal wound. And then on a 6, it will end up doing D3 mortal wounds. So we're going to do the first one on the Torox. So it's one mortal wound in the Torox with no save. And then for the Lehman Rust, it's back there as well. And that's a 5. So it's another mortal wound to the Lehman Russ as well. So we'll make those marks. And you don't have any Tau shenanigans like uh, some uh, Interceptor Overwatch type stuff, do you? No, no, no. Okay, perfect. Oh, so I actually just reread the rule because somebody flagged me from below. So on a 2 through 3, it suffers one mortal wound. But on a 4 or 5, it's D3 mortal wounds. So D3 for the Torox instead. So that's two wounds on the Torox and three wounds on the Lehman Russ. Alright, so I start off with 12 on the Lehman Russ. So I'm down to nine. And for the Torox here, getting still doing this codex here. Or index, I should say. Codex yeah. is indexes, yeah, not yeah, a yeah. problem. You can go ahead and pull them, obviously. Sure, we'll put a lot of stuff up. And guys, like we said, you know, a lot of times in the beginning of your 8th edition games, you're also going to notice um, that you constantly have to go to the rule books and make them go a little bit longer. Um, you know, we kind of want to do the same thing, that way you guys know that this is the typical way this is going to go. Um, so just don't ever hesitate to kind of look at those rule books to make sure you know exactly what's going on. Also, if you're playing a NID or a vehicle heavy army, don't hesitate to buy some more um, D12 dice or something else to be able to count your wounds. It can be a big deal when you start looking around and trying to track your wounds. So it's a really good idea going forward to invest in some of those as well. Or get some of GW's like wound counters that they have that are coming out. So um, that's the end of my movement phase. Perfect. So we're going to go right into the psychic phase as well. Um, just as a quick little bit of uh, housekeeping, I have three command points that I can use over the course of the game. I did take a patrol as I was going with, so I just started with the base three. Uh, Josh, how many do you have? I got six. Okay, uh, so you've got way yeah. more than I do. All right. So real quick, uh, we're going to move to the Psychic phase. So my Psychers that I have are both the Hive Tyrant and the Swarm Lord. Uh, they both come standard with Smite as well. And then the two Hive Powers, um, I gave the Swarm Lord Catalyst, and I gave him also the Horror. And then the um, Hive Tyrant himself will have Onslaught and Catalyst. So they'll both be able to do that. It is matched play, so keep in mind for that as well. What that means is that you can only cast one power each turn with the exception of Smite. Um, so the very first thing I'm going to do is with the Swarm Lord, I'm going to cast Smite onto the Lehman Rust that took three wounds. So it has a casting power of five. All right. It goes Got off it. on an eight. Do you have anything to be able to deny? I sure don't. Okay, so we're looking at D3 mortal wounds onto that already wounded Lehman Rust. So two more mortal wounds. Two more. All right, that brings me down to seven. Okay. 
And then I'm going to cast Catalyst on the Swarm Lord himself. This essentially gives him the 8th edition comparison of Feel No Pain. So on a whenever I suffer a wound of any type on a 5 or a 6, the model doesn't lose a wound at all. Uh, so it has a casting value of 6, so we'll do that on himself. And it goes off on a 7. You again don't have anything to nope. deny. Alright. And then the Hive Tyrant as well is going to be casting Smite on that already wounded Lehman Rust that we've already been hammering away at. Once again, casting value of 5. So it goes off on a 10. So on a 10, um, for those that haven't had the rule book out in a while, that means it's D6 mortal wounds instead of D3 to cast out as well. So we'll roll that real quick. So that's oh, six man, mortal wounds oh, on there. I got one left. So we got one left. One All left. right. So we got one more. We got one wound left from Lehman Russ, and then we it's are going to cast an onslaught over here as well. Um, Actually, you know what? I'm just not going to cast Onslaught because, frankly, I don't want to risk a chance of paralyzing. So I don't really need it this turn, so I'm not going to bother doing it for everything. Uh, so we're going to go directly into the shooting phase for Tyr and its turn one shooting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start all the way in the corner with the Hive Crone over here. Mm -hmm. We are going to shoot our uh, Tentaclids over at the Valkyrie that's over there. Okay, sure. So the Tentaclids have a little rule. It's got the kind of the old Haywire rule. It's a Strength 5 weapon. Um, but if I roll a 4 plus to wound, it does a mortal wound in addition to other things. So what I'm going to do is I need 4s to hit. It's Assault 2. So 2 hits. And then roll into wound real quick. And Snake Eye. So I'm not doing anything for that one as well. And then we're also going to shoot its Stinger Salvo. We're going to shoot the Stinger Salvo at the wounded uh, Lehman Russ. So what is the toughness of the Lehman Russ? Should be T8. Okay, so man, those things really got a boost in this edition, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the uh, Stinger Salvo is just an Assault 4. So 4 dice, hitting on a 4 up. Alright, got 2. And then it's only Strength 5, so I'm going to be needing 5s to wound it. And it has an AP of Dash, so it's got nothing. So once again, no wounds to that Lehman Russ as well. And then the other thing that I'm going to shoot from that first um, Hive Crone over there is the Jewel Cannon. It's an Assault D6 gun um, with Strength 6 AP Dash, so it's automatically going to hit. So let's see how many hits it does. So that's two hits. And once again, it's T8, so I'm going to be needing fives to wound. And nothing again. So that was all nice and useless for that over there. Uh, we are going to be shooting the um, Hive Tyrant over at that unit of guard. So I've got 18 range. inch range. Oh, yeah, Sean, am I, uh, Josh, am I kicking everybody's yeah, butt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, cool. <laughs> so, this is sort of the version of the Twin Link uh, brain le or Devourers with Brain Leech Worms that was in the previous addiction. So it's going to be six shots. Unfortunately, I don't get to reroll any of these. Um, so I'm hitting on threes. Ooh, ooh, that's a lot of ones. Goodness. Alright. And then toughness of the guardsman? Oh, T3. T3. So it's strength 7, so I'm 2s to wound. Alright. And it has an AP minus 1. So that is 6 wounds. So the 1 takes out your cover, so it's going to be your base save that you have for the guardsman. Yep, so 5 ups here. Uh, wow. Save 3. All right. Okay, that's way more than I expected from that. Just take out these front 3 guards here. Oh, the Void Shield, too. Oh, Void Shield, yeah, so four from yeah, Vulnerable, so, actually, so, so only one. Put, yeah, let's just put uh, one. All right, I see how it is. Okay. That's nice. That's back. nice. That's nice. That's nice. I see how it is. All right. And then we're over here. We're going to do the other um, Hive Crown that we have. And then can you measure? It's 12 inches from the Void Shield, right? Yeah, 12 inches from the Void Shield, wholly within, though. So you're not wholly within. So I'm not wholly within. All nope. right. So I'm going to shoot some Tentaclids at the Lehman Rust that has two, or has one wound left. All right. So the first two, and nothing. All right. And then I will take a shot. Uh, we'll shoot the Guardsman, like, right in front of me. All right, sure. And so it's going to be four shots of the Stinger Salvo. Definitely. So two hits. All right. And then three is to wound. One wound. AP? And it is AP AP minus one for that, so okay, you'll get your so five, five ups. ups. So we lose a guardsman. Here. And then we're gonna do the drool cannon also into the guardsman. One, yay. Yeah. <laughs> and that's gonna be a wound on a six. 
And it's AP minus one, so you're gonna lose your cover, so it's one damage. Oh, he's good. And he is golden, wow. See, saves in this edition are just so much different and so much better. Yeah. So now looking around, what I wanna do real quick is kinda of changing my plans. So I'm gonna fire the Exocrine. So the first shot that I'm gonna use with the Exocrine is gonna go right into that good old uh, Lehman Rust that only has one wound left. You're trying to kill it, man. I just want to get that thing out of the way. <laughs> actually, you know what? I'm gonna change my mind on that. So I'm actually going to shoot because it's only got one wound and the Exocrine is gonna be way overkill. So I'm actually gonna shoot the Death Spitters of the pod. Okay. Because I'm within 18 inches right here on that thing. So believe it or not, the Death Spitters are Assault 3 and it's armed with five of them. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, unfortunately, it's got a very poor ballistic skill, so I'm hitting you on fives. All right, all right. And you will get your basic three up, because there's there's no issue for that one. Okay. Um, That's good. Actually, no, you only need one, though. So. Yeah, you'll get your four up and vulnerable, because it's AP minus one. So. Okay. So fives. Oh, that's a lot of bad rolling. Where's Twin Link when I need you? I'm going to be saying that a lot, because I miss that rule so much. All right, so five hits. That actually comes out to be almost exactly dice average. And you're still T8, so this is yep. going to be fives to wound as well. All right. All right, and uh, one, one wound. And that's all you need. One Let's wound. See here. So you're going to be at four up. Four up. Gets yeah, it. Yeah, all, right, all right. Look at that. Fine, fine, fine. All right, looks like we have to do it. We want to kill that thing. Nah. All right, so Exocrine is going to be shooting its plasma cannon at the one wound that is left on that thing. All right. Now the Exocrine's got a special rule. It didn't move this turn, so I get plus one to hit, so I'm actually gonna be hitting on threes. Um, also, the nice part is that if I don't move in the weapons phase, I can shoot all of its weapons twice in the shooting phase. So I'm gonna ask for a quick judge's ruling real quick. If I get to shoot all my weapons twice, do I have to shoot the same target twice, or can I pick different targets? So, all right, I'm gonna shoot the first volley at the um, the one that's taking all the wounds with that Lehman Russ, and I'm gonna shoot my second volley at the Torox that's over there because that's the other thing that I can hit. So we're gonna go from there. So the first six shots at the one wound Lehman Russ, hitting on threes. Oh, there's some hits. That's what I like to see. And then we're sitting here at strength seven, so we're still gonna need the fives. Uh, we're at AP minus three, but the advantage is that it is still um, under that void shield, so it will get a four up and vulnerable save. Um, I will need fives to wound. And three wounds. All right, let's see here. Four up. Oh, one went through. There we go. All right. So it would have done two damage, so it would have been close either way, but we'll take it. Heck yeah. All right, so on a six, so it explodes. Okay. So let's see if it explodes. It does not. Nope. All right. All right. So we'll just go ahead and remove from the field here. All right, and then we'll take the other six shots from the Exocrine at the Torox. Um, I believe that you're within your Void Shield. Can you check for me real quick? Sure thing. Uh, I am not. Okay. Nope. You're not, but you are getting the full cover because I am barely getting you through a window. Um, so it's minus two or minus three for the AP, so we'll have to check your uh, armor save here in a second. Yep. Once again, threes to hit. Three hits. And then what is the uh, toughness of the Torox? Six. All right, so wounding on threes. Oh, one, one wound. All right, you said AP minus three? AP minus three. All right, so I have a regular save of a three up, right? Um, plus, plus one, one. for the cover. So, so you're going to have five, yeah. <clears throat> Good. Golden. So guard are making saves today. So that's a little different. Do not like it. Now the nice part is we're going to use the Swarm Lord's rule for Hive Commander, so it's in the shooting phase. He can pick a unit within six inches, including himself, and have them move in the shooting phase, and just like they would in the movement phase, and then they can still charge afterwards. So can you end him just one inch outside a Pask? Sure. Oh, metal. Beautiful. Oh, old school metal. Yeah. So that is the end of my shooting phase. So we're gonna be going uh, right in charge phase for everything. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna take my Hive Crone over there and I'm gonna charge your Torox. All right, I will overwatch. Yep. I am in essentially an inch away, so anything but a two gets me in, or anything but a double one gets me in. So I get in with the Hive Crone. Okay. 
Alright, so the auto cannons up top here. Needing sixes. Needing sixes. Nothing. And then we'll also be charging in Swarm Lord in the Pask. Right. Gets in. Overwatch with him as well. Yep. So 20 shots from the Gatlin. Oh, yeah. Should say the Punisher. Six is here. Oh, oh boy. Two. Strength five versus your. Uh... I'm T six actually. T six. Oh, so okay. fives. Get it? Nothing. Nothing. All right. Nothing. So we'll slide swarm, swarm, swarm right in there. We got heavy bolters as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Pump we'll those guys out here. Get it in there. So uh, three heavy bolters. I'll be nine shots. Hopefully something can go through this time. Oh, one does. And you're still gonna be looking at a five. Nothing. Nothing. All right. So he's right. in there, no questions asked. And then we are going to be charging the other hive crone into the unit of Imperial Guardsmen that's up there on their nice little barricade. Alrighty. So they can Overwatch, yep, and I'm well. got an eight. So yeah, I'm for sure in there. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's see how many guys can actually see here. So I got six. Okay. This is so much strength. Nope, that's not good. All right. All right. So real quick too, for people that are watching, you know, we have three charges that are coming in. One thing that you want to sort of take a look at when you're doing your charging is nowadays you can bounce from combat to combat. So my entire goal from here is to rock Swarmlord right in here and then consolidate him three inches over to sort of get him into a combat phase with the other tank to, to make you have to move or make a choice. Um, you know, tanks have some different rules, but that's something that's really different now from previous 7th edition, and it's something to kind of keep in mind as well. If you go and just stick that hive girl in my like, yeah. back close right there. So let me ask this, so, um, would that push my Bulgrins into combat yep, then? Yep, they would definitely get in there, because okay. I'm going to be pretty close to within there for everything. Yeah. So yeah, so it's just one of those no. things that'll be close. I'm getting a head shake from our judge across the room. Going to be past an inch away. So, all right, so our measurement was a touch different there, so we're going to be good to go. So we'll be in there with the Guardsmen, but we won't be in there with the Bullygrins, but they will definitely be in there and be able to do some damage the next turn as well. So to start combat, we're going to go with the Swarm Lord. Uh, he wants to eat himself some Pask right here. So basically, we're going to go through his attacks. Um, Swarm Lord finally, in an addition, is an absolute beat stick now. So barring some absolutely horrendous rolling by, on behalf of myself, He's going to be good. Um, I'm going to start with his pincer tail. So Tyranids have a lot of tail weapons. It mandatory states in the codex that you have to swing with them once. Um, so the first one that I'm going to use is the pincer, our pincer tail. So we're going to be hitting it on a two plus against Pask. It's going to hit. It is strength six. What is the toughness of your tank with Pask? It is toughness eight. Okay, so I'm going to be looking at a five to do some damage. We do right. do some damage. All right, and it is D3 damage. So one damage, but I mean, you get your save first you before I even save? roll for that. All yep. Right. Three up, good. We're golden. All right, now for the actual attack. So Swarm Lord's gonna be hitting back. He's got six attacks, because unfortunately we have to use one of the, uh, the pincer tails. So six attacks from him, hitting on twos. Everything is gonna be hitting. And then once again, your toughness is eight, right? Correct. Okay. So we're going to be hitting on fives. Oh, and somehow I panicked and only threw a couple dice in there. <laughs> oh, wow. So this is oh, crazy. Oh, got one. Huh? So only one. So it's at AP minus three. Okay, so six up here. Yep. Oh, nope. So one goes through. Okay, so it's D6 wounds. Oh, man. So two wounds. Two wounds, all right. So he starts off with eight. He is, or excuse me, he starts off with 12, he's down to 10. Down to 10. So that's like a good thing to keep in mind a lot of times now, like vehicles are just so much stronger. Even if you get like a melee beat stick in there, you know, you can really have some issues with it. Um, 
So for those at home that are probably noticing, I'm not used to Swarm Lord having an upgraded strength, so it's actually strength of 8 the whole time. So that's uh, my fault, okay, so we'll deal okay. with that another time. So you All saw right. that, uh, it's on the table. I'm sorry, I'm still used to Swarm Lord being strength 6 and 6 and 7th edition. There's a lot of changes, man. There's uh, a lot of changes. So once again, have your rule books out. I even have mine directly in front of me, and I still look past it. Um, so we'll just go back. So All right, so we're going to be doing the Hive Crone onto the Torox. So what we're going to do is we have to use the tail weapon first. Uh, most of the large Tyranid models do. So once again, hitting on a 4 up. And that's 2, so we're not doing anything. And then we're going to be doing the other 3 attacks. So once again, hitting on 4s. And Tyranids are not rolling well. These are not my dice. I'm going to blame that <laughs> entirely. Um, so They're we're gonna, my dice, actually. We're going to be yeah, <laughs> cheating right there. Uh, we're going to be going into the Guardsman. So once again, we have to use the tail weapon first from the Hive Crone. All right. So that one actually hits, and then it's strength eight, so two up to wound. Easy enough. And that's going to be a two up. All right, uh, AP minus? Minus three. All so right. that's just a so dead I, guy. Yep, dead guy here. And it is D3 wounds, so you're going to be losing just one guy. Okay. All right, and then the other three attacks real quick from the scything wings. Two hits. Once again, I get to use the strength, so the strength six against toughness three. Sure. So we're twos. And we're looking at two wins. Again, AP minus two. AP minus two, so you're only at five, so you still lose two more. All right, and that's my charger, so you can go through ahead and do your counterattacks. Sure. All right, uh, we'll do the guardsman first. So consolidate three inches. Shimmy around the building here. Pile in! Alrighty, so we have, should just be everything within, alright, so, we got five guards, one and a sergeant, so it should give me six attacks here, and they are just simply infantry, right, so I'm hitting on four ups, alright, hit three, again, strength three versus your top six, so. Nothing there. All right. And Pask. Good job, Guardsman. All right, so Pask. This one's interesting. I'm not used to vehicles hitting close combat. It's a little bit different, this edition. Yeah, it's interesting. Okay, so he has three attacks. He's hitting on sixes. Oh, nothing. All okay. right. All right. And then I think the last thing we have is a Torox, right? Yes. All righty. Interesting stuff. All right, so the Torox again is hitting on sixes, and he also has three attacks. Oh, look at that, two sixes. All right. Uh, and then strength six here. So four, so we'll take one wound. Mm -hmm. uh, Hive Crone has a four up save, and he does not get it, so he Ooh, takes one. Yeah, the vehicle causing damage on a flyer. So the vehicle has Good actually job. done more damage than a monstrous creature in close combat. <laughs> Welcome to eighth edition. <laughs> Seventh, we didn't really miss you. So, <laughs> um, so that is the end of tier in turn one. We need to do a little bit of morale here yeah, yeah. on that one unit of guardsmen. All right. So I suspect to lose some guardsmen here. I could spend in two command points to auto pass this, but you got they six. might just be automatically gone. Let's see here. Do I want to spend my command points? What's their leadership? Leadership has gone down since seven, so they're at leadership seven. Okay. Um, they lost four guys here, so I really need to roll three. Um, sure, let's just roll one. Oh, oh so, that's so bad. 13. Right, they're, they're absolutely so gone. all of them are Maybe gone. Maybe I should have spent those command points, huh? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you're doing a little bit yeah. of math number, you know, yeah, it's just yeah. kind of the way it works. Gambling. Um, so we're going to consolidate um, with that hive crone, and we're just going to consolidate right over here. No, we're not going to consolidate. I'm getting the shaking off right here. We're going to leave him right there. And we're now at a different phase. I feel like I should be able to do that. Can't consolidate in the morale phase. I know. <laughs> I wish I could. It just makes sense. It's like one of those things that I think for 8th edition is a little weird and a little wonky because I've definitely done it before and I've seen people do it. Because you're so used to when the whenever a unit gets wiped out being able to consolidate. Um, that to like keep in mind that you can't do that when it's in like a different phase from that part. So... Good thing to know, good thing to catch out for everybody that's watching. So 
Uh, turn and turn one is done. I got one more morale check. Aren't you going to auto-pass that thing? They lost auto one pass. guy. No, they lost two. They oh, lost two? Alright, kill another guy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Let's see it. So let's see here. So I could lose another guy. Okay, nope. They're good. And I think I might have done the math wrong on the other one. So I would have lost three guys. So I should actually have three more left. Because they were leadership seven. I lost four. And then so I add six to it, so that's 13. Um, oops. So wait, hold on. So let's do this for everybody out. Your leadership yep. seven. Leadership seven. I rolled a six. Right? You that lost four guys. So you're actually leadership like... All right, so you oh yeah 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 sorry sorry leadership seven uh, add six uh, thirteen I lost four guys brings me down to four uh, or excuse me uh, brings me down to nine I went over my leadership by what two two so yeah so you should have some other guys back there yep so I have four guys left because there are six guys to get. put a note in the comment if you've had our math wrong we're yep. doing this very late I've been in the hot sun all day so <laughs> right now Josh could just be doing anything and I would yeah, just be yeah, nodding I'm, my I'm head just along totally going back uh, so it's not a problem at all all right so imp guard turn one begin all right so guys we're back real quick we had a brief little talk about the rules so I the hive crown cannot consolidate for two reasons. One, we did a little bit of the morale test wrong. Two, the actual reason is that you can only consolidate at the end of the fight phase. At the end of the fight, sorry, not fight phase. Um, you know, if there's no miles and you consolidate towards the closest unit. Um, so we did screw that part up, so we put everything back the way it was. And then we also had a little bit of a morale because it's been a long day and we have all been uh, in the sun and in our 90 some degree Michigan weather. So Josh, explain actually how many models you have left. Yeah, yeah, sure. So this, uh, you know, this is coming from a guy whose first game of 8th edition, um, never played, <laughs> even played AOS. So, you know, th this works exactly the same as AOS. So essentially I rolled a 6 for my morale test. Um, I lost 4 guys. I add that 6 to the 4. I have a 10. My leadership on my sergeant within the squad here, the highest leadership in the squad is 7. So I lose 3 guys. So I'll just go ahead and pull 3 guys off of here. And now I have three guys remaining. So not all six were lost, like we previously stated. And so now we're back on track. So once again, Imperial Guard. Turn. All right, guys. Uh, top of Imperial Guard, Astro Tarm, turn one. I uh, got quite a bit of movement going on. I got to shift some things around. So let me just go ahead and start with this Executioner here. He's still full wounds, so he can go his full uh, inches here. And facing doesn't matter. I still want to turn him. So beautiful. <laughs> Do the facing, but uh, it doesn't really matter too much here. We're going to move some bullgrins. They got a movement of six inches here. And we're going to just have the priest follow him up. Remember that they're not a unit now because independent characters uh, simply do not join. And one of the key things, too, is that I like to say it's kind of like the Sears Tower. Uh, Astronaut Terror will always be Imperial Guard to me. So I will literally, <laughs> if you hear me say that, that's what we're talking about. Not it's not the Willis, the Willis Tower, it's yeah. the Sears Tower. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pull a couple things out of combat here because I don't think it's good for me to be in combat. Here. But I want you to stay. There's faces to eat. Actually, let's push these guys over here. And the only thing is I'm not going to be able to shoot, unfortunately. Torox movement is still 14, so luckily I can scoot away pretty far. Scoot! Scoot! <clears throat> Obviously don't want Pask in combat anymore. He actually has a movement of 8 still. So we'll shimmy him out. He just won't be able to shoot. And then Flyer has to move 20 inches. So let's go ahead and shift him over here. You know, another thing too for people at home, and we're in the process of getting some Purge the Alien versions for ourselves, is in 8th edition there's a lot of reason why you would need like tokens, like you know, Pass can't shoot because he backed out. Um, on larger games, this is just a 1500 point game, it can be really good to have a token, you know, like you'd have a bullet with like a, you know, no sign through it or something along those lines to really differentiate what can and what can't shoot. It's just going to help you keep track. Um, right now Josh and I are playing kind of a little bit smaller model count, sort of with the amount of tanks and monstrous creatures that we have, but if you have a whole board, you can sometimes lose track of that. Um, so it's just kind of something to keep in mind. I'm going to kind of shove some hazard tokens on for now. Yeah. Probably not the best use, but uh, it will work. It gets work. the job done. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay, so that's the end of my movement phase. I think we're, we're all set there. Um, these guys are all set. Okay, cool. So, psychic phase. That was fun. The um, big psychic phase for that's Imperial right. Red. Still about the same as 7th for Astromoth Arm. Shooting! Alright, let's go ahead and jump into shooting then. The Imperial Guard phase. <laughs> the Imperial Guard phase, that's right. This is the phase that I'm scared about. Alright, so, you know, the, the line of sight... I mean, obviously it still matters, but it's from the actual whole vehicle itself. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to issue some orders since we still have tank orders in main. I'm going to try to issue, uh, what was it called? I believe it's Gunner's Kill on Sight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yep, Gunner's Kill on Sight. That way I can reroll my hit, ro hit rolls of one. So, of course, I probably want to issue it on the Executioner, that plasma. We don't want to get hot. So from Pask there. Let's see here. Oh, it's a nine. So that does not uh, go off. So I think I need a leadership seven. Love it. Oh. Oh, let's see. Let's see what past leadership is here. He's, he's a little player. bit braver. Yeah, he's a little bit braver here. Let's see here. Nope, leadership eight. Nothing. All right. All right, so it doesn't go off. All right. All right, so other shots. Uh, we're still going to shoot with that guy, though. Yep. So let's go ahead and shoot with those uh, Executioner. So heavy D6. Also, in fairness to Pask, he also did just have a Swarm Lord trying to slash into his tank. So, you know, <laughs> if you can't right. give an order, that's fine. Yeah. All right, so let's see here. I think they're the same weapon profiles for the Executioner Plasma Cannon and the... Yep. And for the actual regular plasma cannon. So the plas executioner plasma cannon is heavy D6, so I'll roll this one first. So three from that guy. Which target are you shooting at? Uh, I'm going to shoot from the executioner into your uh, Storm, Lord. Storm Lord there. And then I got two regular plasma cannons on here, and these are heavy D3. Alright, so one and two here. Alright, so that'll be a total of six shots from that guy. All right, and he's still uh, full strength, so he needs four ups. Ooh, look at that, no ones either. Whew! Should have cast the whore. Think about it now. <clears throat> All right, um, these are going to be strength seven. Strength seven. I am actually only. Ooh, that doesn't look like it matters. Uh, but I'm only T six. So T six. So, so just three's two do it. Alrighty, uh, this is gonna be. Uh, well, I'm gonna yeah. take my saves first. Yep, AP minus three. So. AP minus three, so yep. I'm gonna be using my five up and vulnerable save because. Yep, that's where we're gonna be at. So five up and vulnerables. Neither. Neither. Alright, All right, last cannon for him. Well, on roll your wound damage. Oh, wound damage. Uh, we'll ca we can count that one too. Be, yeah, yeah, right? Uh, it's just damage one for each of those. Each so, plasma shot's just yeah, yeah, one yeah. damage? Yep. So what was it, two damage? Yep, so just two damage. All right, well, I still got Catalyst up, so it, I got the five up to ignore wounds. And we're golden. All right. Thank you, Catalyst. Oh, man, oh, man. All right, uh, so last cannon shot there. Nope, nothing there. Um... Alrighty, what else can we have to, to shoot with here? So these guys can't shoot. We'll go ahead and try to pump a bunch of uh, las gun shots into you since everything can be. So let's see here. We should be in rapid fire range. Yep, yep, yep. Plenty, plenty of rapid fire. All right, so we got uh, five regular guys, and we have a las pistol, so that'd be ten las gun shots. Uh, plus one for the pistol. And then these guys should be hitting the fours here. In our infantry squad here. So That's yep, a lot of sixes. Fours. I know. Right. Wow. Okay. A lot of hits, too. Alright, so these are going to be strength three. Okay, Swarm Lord. Tough six. six. So right. sixes. Sixes. Just one. Uno mas. Yep. And I'm guessing we're at AP regular. Yeah, AP dash. Right? So three up. Got it. Got it. Alrighty, so auto cannon should be uh, yep, so it should be two two shots, still strength seven in this edition. Nope. Nothing's gonna hit. We'll never find out. Nope. <laughs> 
All right, not uh, not pumping too much into that guy there. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and try the new uh, Valkyrie here. So we have the multiple rocket pods. So I got two rocket pods. Both of these are heavy D6. Okay, so let's see how many shots I get. Oh, I get six. All right. Alrighty, and these are hitting on fours. Okay. Pretty good. So four. And then these are going to be strength five. So I need fives. Just one. Okay. Uh, AP minus one. On to which one? On to your Stormlord. Sorry. On the Stormlord yep. again? Okay. So we're looking at our four up for just the regular armor. Nope. And then our catalyst. No. So Swarmy's going to take one. Now I got to need a wound counter. I got one. All right, cool. We get the big fat dice. Last cannon shooting into him. Hits on a five. That's what I don't want. Yeah. Uh, all right, strength nine. Uh, do Wounds, it. and then uh, go ahead and take your save there. AP minus three. Five of them vulnerable. Ooh. Oh. Right. Okay. D six. D six damage. Four. All right. Four from the catalyst. Why can't it be four up? So three more wounds. You can knock me down to eight there if you don't mind. Since you're closer. Sure, yeah. Let's see what it is. There we go. All right. Let's see what else I have to shoot with. I think the only thing I have left is the uh, the uh, excuse me. You got the wyverns. Wyverns. The wyverns. The yes. wyverns. The wyverns. All right. So this one's a little bit different, right? Because we don't have templates anymore and these can shoot independently yep. so let's see here should still be a uh, 48 inch range what do I have in sight here template is still just shoot at your storm mode but I don't think the uh, storm 4 is really going to do it yeah, we're going to get 5 yeah. alright we'll shoot one of the wyverns in your storm mode okay. so 46 shots. Oh, 11, uh, 13. Okay. <clears throat> and hitting on fours? Hitting on fours, correct. So for those at home that are kind of wondering, like, really why was the swarm mode that big of a deal? Um, and why not go for, like, the gaunts or something like that to kill? Um, the gaunts and everything else are protected by the venom throat, so it'd be oh, fives man. to hit. So you're almost looking at, like, sort of the same issue with, like, rolling to hit and rolling to wounds with math. Um, Love the hits, for, man. We're gonna hit that many times. It's okay. Fives. Fives. Oh, not, not so lucky. I was gonna say. Here. Only two. There is, there, there's math back there. You, there you go. <laughs> there's a. Uh, uh, AP. Uh, AP should just be uh, zero. Yeah. Okay. So threes. Okay. All set, well, man. Double six. We'll take box cars all day. All right. So with that same. Uh, Wyvern, we got a storm bolter. This is heavy three, hit on fours again. Just one. And then this is just gonna be strength five again. Okay, so hit on five. Uh, AP. AP minus one. Okay, so we'll do the four. Oh. Gotta keep Box. it in the box, even though it was a five. That's a six. Wow. Oh, look at that. All right. You're still good. He's mad. It took a couple wounds. All right, what the hell? We'll Upset. just We'll just throw the other uh, Wyvern into him. Okay. All right, look at that, 10, 14 shots. So again, the, the uh, Swarm Lord is also two wounds away from dropping down and like strength and power as well. So that's another kind of reason that in this edition it's important to take a look um, at Four. monstrous creatures and vehicles and see how the damage affects them. Yeah, five again. Uh, a little bit better, four of them. Four of them. All right, three ups. Oh. There we go. Alright, so three catalysts. Oh, oh man. Horrendous. Alright, so drop me down to five wounds. So find the five on this side. Uh, there we go. So oh. I am back into moving only seven inches. I have a strength six, and I actually lost an attack out of there, too. So. It's good news for Pask. Yes. I suppose. Uh, so the uh, heavy, uh, heavy bolter. Fours again, and then 
Okay. That's it for my shooting. All right. Perfect. Morale phase. Somebody wants to charge. Tyranids don't really believe yeah. in morale. Uh, I got a, a, I have a lot of yeah, single yeah, yeah, models. Yeah. I also got a lot of synapse all around that table for everything. Yeah. So, but I think I do want to charge. Um, skipping ahead of myself here. Okay. So, um, I'll go ahead and charge with my bullgrins here. So, bullgrins. You're gonna get in there. Yep. Yeah. See here. Of course, and make it. Okay. And then I'm going to overwatch. Yep. And the cool part is I get to overwatch with all weapons right now, too, which is a little different than last time. I can't overwatch because oh, I'm already locked in combat. No. But I'm not locked in yeah, combat. Yeah, I pulled, I pulled the out The guards were left and ran away. Yep. Yeah. Guards were left and ran yep. away. Yep. You can overwatch. I, I forgot, I forgot about that. I saw the guards were still scared. at the top and forgot yeah. about it. All right. So the D6 for the jewel cannon at first. So these are going to automatically hit. So two. And the bully grins are toughness what? Tough five. five. Okay, so threes. One wound. One wound on the bully grins? Yep, AP minus one. All right, AP minus one, they get a five up save. Okay. Oh, yeah. Takes it's it like fine, a boss. All right, and then the stinger <laughs> salvo. Two sixes. All right, we'll take that. that. And then we need uh, fours. Two more wounds. Any AP on these? Uh, these are just AP minus one. Yeah. Okay. So five again. That one. That takes a wound. Takes a wound. They are three wounds apiece. Perfect. And then the tentaclids, last thing. One hit. Oh, no hits because we're in overwatch. So we're good. All right. So one line drops down to two. All right. And that's it for the charges. Um, All right. All right. So we're going to take a quick TO here for a second because I am super thirsty, so we'll be right back. <laughs> all right, we're back. My thirst has been quenched. Um, also, we realized as we were recording that some of these dice are a touch hard to read. Um, so we'll shout everything out to you guys and move them. We are in the process of getting our own dice, so that will solve this issue, so we apologize. Um, but we are now into Imperial Guard fight phase. All right, cool. Um, so we should be all set. All my guys are in base contact here within an inch. Um, so the cool thing about this is obviously I strike first because I charged in. Mm -hmm. um, so my uh, Bulgrins here, the Bonehead, has four attacks base. I get plus one um, due to the special rule of Avalanche of Muscle. It gives me an additional attack in the fight phase for the first time they fight. All right. And then since there's a Minstorm and Priest within six inches, he also gives them an additional attack. Okay. This is the War Hymns that re they replaced. Um, instead of rolling for the War Hymns, they just simply get an additional attack. So. My bonehead will get six attacks then, um, and then my uh, other bullgrins will get five each. All right, so that puts me up at a total of 16 attacks here, and I am hitting on threes. <clears throat> oh, I'm not liking these ones on twos. So. So I am base base strength five. Um, however, the Bulgrin Maul, which I equipped them with, uh, gives me plus two to my strength. So I am strength seven. All right. So threes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we got eight and AP. AP minus one. Okay. So fives on eight dice. All right. So we need fives. Uh, not horrible. That's all we're looking at. So six wounds. So I'm gonna cut it down from six to twelve, or from twelve to six. I mean, all right. That's it. Oh, all well, right. your attacks back, right? Uh, yeah. I will strike back uh, because I only have six wounds. Um, I'm actually still hitting on a four. It's just my movement is dropped down okay. quite a bit. Um, so the first attack that I have to do is with my tail. So four up to hit. Hits. And it's strength eight, so two, uh, what's your toughness, five? T5. So three up, I'm doing sixes all day. Yeah, man. And then it's minus three to your AP. All right, so I will take my invuln save then. Okay. Four up, all set. Poop. All right, and then the scything wings, and I can reroll ones when I roll the hit. So fours, and one hit. And then I'm gonna need a four again, and I get it. Um, it's just, it's minus two. Minus two, so again, my four up in roll. And they just don't care. 
all day long. All right, so that is the end of the fight phase. Um, I'm a single model, so I'm not looking at doing morale. So it is uh, Tyranid turn two. As well. All right, so we are here in Tyranid turn two. We had a brief discussion. Um, due to some of the viewing angles, like if you could see this, the Exocrine could only really see Pask over here, or see the uh, Minosaur and Priest over here. So I was trying to figure out how I could shoot him the whole time. Uh, we were checking the rules, and then of course I didn't notice that the giant Valkyrie is right in the way. Um, so I can actually only shoot the Valkyrie with the Exocrine first. I can't shoot the Priest because technically the Valkyrie is still the closest unit. So even though it is a pain in the butt to try to shoot that thing, that is where I have to aim my fire first before shooting the Priest. So that is going to affect sort of the way that I do some things this turn. It's going um, to affect my strategy in the future too. Exactly. <laughs> so movement phase real quick. Um, we're going to do the Gene Stealers. They're also going to advance. Gene Stealers have a special rule where they can move and advance and still charge. So they can get down the field pretty quick. So Gene Stealers will be advancing 10, so, or, uh, 4, so that's going to be a total of 12 inches. So I'm going to get right to within 1. Uh, the Torox will be just outside. We'll get them going here. And then we're also going to advance with the Venomthropes. Three. Just going to move these guys up a touch. And then we'll be advancing with the Hormagons as well. Five. All right. They actually want to go somewhere. Once again, this is just so much better than... 7th edition where we had to move and then take a whole other phase to move all these guys again. Um, I'm only running 10 Gaunts, but you can imagine running a whole unit of like 30 where you have to move them twice. It just really adds a lot of time to the game as well. Um, Josh, can you move my Moloch like over as close as you can to your guardsman? Yeah. He's got a full 9 inch range. Oh, okay. So just within an inch. Yeah. Or not within an inch, but inch away. Exactly. And then, hilariously enough, what a lot of people don't know is that that Tyranid drop pod over there is actually still a creature. So it can actually still fight in combat and do like a lot of just shenanigans. So you're actually going to move him close. It's like the tank, huh? So, you know, it's just probably the first time a tank has ever been in combat with a mall. A little bit, a little <laughs> bit of silliness that we have there for everything. And then we will also, if you could just drop my flying hive tyrant um here move my swarm lord first closer to pass yep, yep. he's still hungry he's got a seven inch movement so we're gonna move him there and then if you could just put my hive tyrant there um he's got a nice 16 inch move so he's gonna be with well within range and then i'm going to bring my hive crone then over here he's gonna charge he's gonna bring his wound along with him and so we're doing pretty good with all of our movement. Everybody else is going to sort of stay seated where they are. And then uh, we're going to go into tier and Psychic Phase. So first thing I want to do is Swarm Lord is going to cast Catalyst on himself again. So it goes off on a 9. It has a casting value of 6. So he's back to having Catalyst. We're also going to do Swarm Lord to do Smite onto the Valkyrie. Uh over there so casting value of five it goes oh, off on wow, 11 man, so yeah. it's a uh, d6 wounds instead of d3 all right oh and it's six wounds so all right. three so the valkyrie starts off with 14 he is down to 10 put down to eight. Oh, oh, six, six wounds yes yeah. yes i got any ah. how do you math apparently. oh smite how much i love you sometimes um, and then we're also going to be rocking the horror um, from the uh, Hive Tyrant, and we're going to be going him onto the Bully Grins. So basically what it's going to do is if it goes off, it's going to be minus one onto hit rolls. So it's got a casting value of six and goes off on an eight. Um, can you deny any of these? I haven't been asking, but you said for the first no, turn. I don't have any yeah. psychers. So, All right. Yeah. And then the other one for the Hive Tyrant, he's going to do Smite, and I'm going to check my range real quick. 18 inches. So I'm going to target that last unit. I think there's three yep, guys. Yep, I got three left. guys there. So we're going to try to get lucky here. It does go off on an eight. So D3 mortal wounds. Hoping for a five or six. And it's a three. So two wounds. So two guardsmen take a rocket. Okay. This is my sergeant down there. And then what we're going to do real quick is just move along into the shooting phase. 
So shooting phase real quick for Tyranids, it's going to go nice and easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is Tentaclids from the Hive Crone into the Valkyrie. Uh, because it is a, the Valkyrie is a flying unit, I do get to reroll the hits. So I'm going to be doing force to hit, and they both actually hit. Um, Valkyries, uh, the Tentaclids have a special rule where when I rolled a wound, if I get a 4 or higher, it gets a mortal wound in addition to other damage, and if I get a 6, it's D3 mortal wounds as well. Uh, the strength of the Tentaclid, though, is just 5, so I would need, like, um, about a 5 to wound you anyways. Okay, so, sure. 4 up, it does a mortal wound, though. And we're looking at 6. <laughs> okay, so, let's do the 2 D3 mortal wounds. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Double man. box cars again. Alright, so 6, six? more mortal wounds. Alright, we should start off at uh, 14 here, if I'm not mistaken. So, he's down to 2. <laughs> No, 12 wounds. 12 wounds total. So he's dead. Yeah. Wow. That was 12 total. Okay. So one of the interesting things about 8th edition is the amount of variance that you can kind of get now. It's way different. Kind of think of a lot of like the psychic powers and everything sort of having like almost a melt -a shot <laughs> where it can really change the effect to where you can have it work out. So after you, my friend. All right. So let's see if he explodes. He does. Oh, he does explode. <laughs> the bar right, right. are flying on these oh, dice right man, now. Man, oh man. Well, those sixes. All right, so let's see how the explodes result happens within. Uh, so if this model is re reduced to zero wounds, roll d6. Uh, on a six, it explodes. Uh, each unit within six inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. All right. So let's see who's within six inches. A lot. I'm over here. Oh, 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 sorry, over here. So for uh, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. does it catch the flyer? Yeah, let, me, let me see here, because I think the Valkyrie might be a little bit different. Sorry, I thought you were... So, Crash and Burn. Yep. Still the same. Uh, yep. So, my so. Flyrant and the Hive Crone are within six. Yeah, so I think my Guardsmen are probably within six here. Okay. And it's how yep. many Mortal Wounds? Uh, D3. D3. All right, so do the Hive Crone first. All righty. So, Hive Crone. Three. All right, so you just... Eats it, so he goes down to five. So Herman goes down to eight. All right, flying high timer. Two. Two. And then I'll let you roll for my uh, guardsman. Uh, the flyer needs a little help. He's down to eight, right? Nope. How many wounds does he have right now? He has ten, right? Now. Yep. So he takes two, so he's down to eight. So we'll use one of these dice instead of two d6. Just sure. makes things a little bit more Sounds easy. Good. Oh, I forgot I had that on. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. That's all right. I'll let you roll for my guardsman. Roll. And the guardsman will take. One. One, Thanks, so one guardsman gets that. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's kind of the cool part about some of the vehicles. This thing's yeah, taken out, man. and that Valkyrie is now is gone toast. and out of there. All right, so this changes a couple of things. So one of the things I can do now, because the Valkyrie is gone, is I can actually measure. And your priest is how far away? My priest is... Am I touching him right there? Yeah, yeah. You're right on top of me. Okay. What's he looking at? Uh, Sorry, what's that? What's the distance on that? Uh, whatever you're at okay. over the... So yeah, 29? You're, you're, you're definitely in, so... And the Torox is just a bit outside. So actually, believe it or not, the Priest is the closest thing that I could hit. So I actually do get to shoot him. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, though, is I, I just shot the Tentaclids with, the, um, or with my guy. So what I'm going to do also with him is I'm just going to try to shoot something else. Um, I have an 8 inch drool cannon, but I believe I'm just short. Josh, can you check right there? Am I touching your tank or no? Yep, you're just short there. Okay, just short there, so I can't use my drool cannon. So I'm going to shoot the stinger salvo at the unit of guards that took one wound. Alrighty. <clears throat> and I am missing a lot right there, so just one hit. And we're going to need a 3 to wound. And one wound onto the guardsman. Um, so just their base save, because it is minus 1 AP. Yep, so those guys. Alrighty. So, we have 5 up here. And, yep. Taking a wound to the guardsman. Still want to pull from wherever, but that's okay. All right. And then we are going to shoot the Exocrine. Is gonna, has it moved, so it gets to shoot twice. It also gets plus one to its ballistic skill. Right. So its first shot is going to be towards the priest. The second shot is going to be over there towards the Korox. Right. So the first shot against the priest, hitting on threes. Can you see it right there? So three hits. All right. And T3. then T3, and I am strength 7, so we're going to be looking at 2s. Yep. 
So three wounds. Three it wounds. is at AP minus three. Oh wow! All right. Good thing I have a four of invul. Okay. Look at that. All saved. Wow. Okay. Now I kind of <laughs> wish that I didn't have to declare both my shots because I'd like to do something <laughs> a little different right now. So, other six shots on the the tank. A little mad about the way this worked out. So five hits. And the strength or the toughness of the Torox is six. Correct. Correct. So threes. Wow, that's a lot of ones. So two wounds, um, uh, minus three AP. Minus three AP, uh, I am a three up right now. So, so six. six. I'm sorry, you said three wounds? Uh, just two. Just two. All right. Yep. Put the right on this. Right, so one goes through. Okay, so it just takes two damage. All right, so two damage, I'm down to eight. Uh, you had eight. Oh, I'm eight. Oh, I'm down to six. I'm down to six. All right. So we're good to go with that shooting. And then the flyer over here is going to, let's see what he wants to do. The toughness on both past tank and the executioner tank are both eight. They're both eight. What about the wyvern? The wyvern is going to be a little bit less. Um, they are actually T6. Okay. So we are going to be shooting then at the wyvern. So it's 12 yeah, shots, sure. hitting on threes. Man, do I miss my Twin Link Devourers. And then it is Strength 7, so we're going to be wounding on 3s, and it is minus 1 for the AP value. Oh, goodness. So, 4 wounds, minus right. 1 for the AP minus value. Minus 1 means I have 4 ups. Okay, 2 ups. So 2 damage onto one of the Wyverns. Just not as punchy as they were in 7th edition, <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> so I am down to 9. Alright, and then we will also use the Death Spitters from the um, Spore into the unit that is sitting directly in front of him. So that's 15 shots, hitting on 5s unfortunately. 15 shots. 15. 5s. Oh man. Still. You always gotta make them roll, as yeah, any yeah, yeah. orc player will uh, <laughs> will tell you that it's not a big thing. So, all right, so only four to hit, and then we're gonna be looking at fives to wound, and nothing. Right. A whole lot of nothing. All right, so shot, 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 shot. So we are going to be doing a couple charges here real quick. So we will be charging first the Gene Stealers into tank. My Torox there. It goes off. Yep. And I will of course overwatch. So we got my auto cannons here. Um, it should actually be four shots here. If I'm not mistaken. Um, some sixes. Okay. Okay. Anything else in there? Uh, I got some. No. Can your guy shoot out? Yeah, they can shoot out the hatch. Um, I'm not sure if the hatch is actually from the model itself, because they certainly. Remember the last edition, they had firing points. So, but I don't see it in this edition. So I'm gonna just say no. All right. Okay. So we'll be charging, and these old guys will be able to all get in there. Um, I know some people at home are wondering because they most likely, and I mean this nicely, have been playing it wrong because I was playing it wrong. Um, so some Tyranid players at home will be wondering why I didn't try to bring Venomthropes over to get the Gene Sealers to have a better minus one. Um, so Overwatch is unmodified, so there is no minus ones or plus ones or anything to Overwatch. It's always in the sixes. Um, I know some Tyranid players, and especially on some of the Tyranid uh, message boards that I've seen, I've been talking about how great Venomthropes <clears throat> and Lictors are because they can't get hit by Overwatch because you take minus one to the hit rolls. Um, but that's just really not the case <laughs> because that's just not the way it works out. Overwatch is a little bit special for that one. Uh, and so Swarmlord over here wants to eat himself some Pask. All right. So oh, boom, yeah, he's, he's, he's in there. In there. And Pask gets his Overwatch. Pask gets his Overwatch as well. So. Uh, <clears throat> Alright, so 20 shots from so many <clears throat> shots. Punisher. Alright. 
right, so just two there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these are strength five. You say you're T6? T6. Which is one wound now. So one wound and at an AP of? AP zero. Okay. So three up. We're good. All right. And then nine shots from the heavy bolters. And Okay. So he's in there. And then we're going to do the spore is going to come right here and charge your tank. All righty. I get overwatch there as well. Yep. So let's see here. Last cannon. Nope. And then uh, D6 with the uh, weapon on top, the turret. So D1. And then 2D3 for my sponsor in the uh, One and one. So just three shots here, Overwatch, and sixes. Okay. And then we are also going to charge the. Well, here, let me roll for this turn to say. We're in there. And then we're going to also charge the Hive Tyrant into the tank as well. Okay. You're already in combat, so I'm in there in 10. Yep. So, no overwatch there, obviously, yep. since I overwatch. And then the Moloch is going to eat some faces. He gets in there on a 6, but you get your overwatch of your guardsmen. Sure. Um, so I will have Moloch over here, so definitely within 12. Uh, model line of sight should just be... I don't think my sergeant can see him there, but my other guardsmen can. So it'll be six shots since I'm in rapid fire range. Meaning sixes, nothing there. And okay. then the auto cannon. Meaning sixes, nothing. Okay. So he's over there and we can slide him over. Yeah, um, so we're just gonna resolve all the charge unit first. So Swarm Lord, um, unfortunately because of his wound level, he actually drops down to the lower level of combat. So he only has six attacks. And the Tyranids have the rule that I, I don't really like that much where he has a tail that he has to take a swing with. Um, I don't like that you have to. I think you should have the option of swinging with it once, um, but that's just me. So his tail attack first does not hit, even though all I needed was a two. <laughs> and then my five regular attacks hitting on twos. Well, those will all hit. And then I'm strength seven. Um, I used to be strength eight, even though I didn't take into account that the first turn. So we need fives to wound you as well. And we got two. So two. this is at minus three AP. Minus three AP. Um, so I should have a three up normally, so I'm at sixes here. Yes. Oh, look at that. Boxcars box again. We were rolling boxcars all day, there so apparently Swarmlord can't do anything getting into that kind of close combat. Um, all right, so we will go and resolve the Hive Tyrant right there since he's in there also. Um, and he has five attacks base. Hitting on three or hitting on twos as well. So we get everything. So he's somehow better attacking close combat than the sword lord. Um, just basic strike six. So one. So one. One wound. One damage. Any AP? Nope. All right. So three up here. And we're okay. So yeah. All right. Okay. I'll see how it is. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I forgot to do his tail attack, but he didn't do a single bit of damage, so I don't really care. No, um, just roll for it now. And one of the interesting things that we'll post in the comments, and you guys can see, um, a lot of people armed their Hive Tyrants in the previous edition with kind of the Daka Tyrants, so they have the Devourers. Mm -hmm. uh, I ran it once this guy, game too, so people can see just how much it changed. It's really not just the end-all, be-all like it used to be. It just doesn't have the firepower the damage it used to be. And one of the interesting things, and it's still kind of up for debate, is that with the Hive Tyrants now, if you replace um, its Scythe and Claws with its Devourers, it actually doesn't really have like a melee profile as a weapon. So like kind of the current debate is, does it just run and do damage at zero? Like what does it do like in close combat for that? So definitely a good thing to talk with your group about. Make sure everybody has the rules and uh, talk about it in the comments page. And we will even tell you what our ruling is on it. And we'll tell you what the rulebook exactly says because we know it's kind of a contentious rule. So we're going to go over here to our Gene Stealer combat real quick. So Gene Stealers are Gene Stealers are boss mode in this edition. So I actually get 15 attacks. Man, oh man, three attacks a piece, huh? Three attacks a piece. They finally get to do something. So we're gonna use our Red Claws as well. So this is just gonna be hitting on threes. Ah, I wish we were hitting on twos. <laughs> All right, I only so, got six wounds left. So on 10 attacks. So exactly perfect math. 
Um, the strength is just user, so it is strength four, so I do need fives to wound. If I do roll a six, the AP, though, does go to minus four for that. So you wouldn't get any right, save at all save. if we yeah, do all sixes. Right. So we'll we have six. right. no one no so save at all, there. and one more wound. That's it, though. All right. So, I'm sorry, what did you say the AP was on the regular? The regular one's just minus one, so you'd be getting your four up. All right. So four up here. Nope. So two yeah. wounds go through. Gotcha. This is down and, to four. And so this is one of those cool things, like, as you guys have seen, like, and this is why you might see some guardless pack quite a bit of punch. Um, because right now, guardless are able to do quite a bit of damage because the tanks are just so strong. They have to sleep for everything. So it's a nice thing to sort of take a look at. Uh, last comment that I have from you, or I have two more comments from the units that charge. Um, it's the Moloch. The Moloch actually has so many attacks. I think the Moloch is actually one of the best models in the entire Tyranid army. So believe it or not, the Moloch has nine attacks. Oh, man. And you get to reroll ones basically when you hit this. Um, he does have his little tail weapon, so I do have to hit that first. So hitting on a four doesn't go do anything. So my other eight attacks, and I am getting to reroll ones with this one as well. Oh, sorry, I'm noticing something else. Um, somebody flagged me down because another one of its attacks has to be with his mouth. So once again, hitting on a four, <laughs> not doing anything. So good thing he has so many attacks and he had to make a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So rerolling rolls of one and fours. So oh, four. four. All right. And then my uh, strength of it is strength six, so I'm gonna need yep. twos. So four wounds, but it is AP dash, so you do get all your armor. Alrighty. So five ups here. Save one. Save one. Three pop off. So we'll need the sergeant and. The auto okay. And another thing too, because there's so many different phases of the game where things can die, like for example, you could take a wound in the psychic phase, you could take wounds of your own models in the shooting phase and you have like the crash of the model and everything else, it's a good idea to kind of have a counter, like if you have big blob units that are suspect for morale, um, to be able to kind of keep track of what exactly you need to roll for morale when you go through everything. Um, so the last thing that I have that charged in is, believe it or not, my good old tear in a drop pod. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets d6 attacks onto the tank. Four. So four. And fives to hit. And That's one six, hit. All right. And I'm going to need a five to wound. And no wounds. So, I mean, this is probably pretty strategic on your part because then I can't attack if I back up. Yeah, you know, the nice part it. about the tier to drop pods as opposed to like the Space Marines one yeah. is that you do get to move afterwards. You're not hitting a lot, yeah. uh, but it does have quite a bit of shooting attacks and you can kind of keep jumping around. Yeah. Um, so, it's something that a lot of times you can win things on objectives because people don't really think about dealing with them and they can exactly. kind of fly around a little bit. Um, so, this combat is first and you get to, I believe, you get to pick first. Alrighty, or so. actually, judge, real quick. I did all my charging phases. We have this one in the same unit of combat, so I get to pick which goes first, so I'm gonna go first. So I'm gonna spend a command point turn. to interrupt. Oh, what a dick. <laughs> so I'm down in five command points, um, and then I will go ahead and attack. What a jerk. So my war hymns, um, it's not the first round of combat anymore, so I am uh, no longer receiving that bonus from the Bulgrins, but since the Minestorm Priest is still within six inches, I still get that extra attack from my Warhounds. So, uh, Bulgrin base uh, is actually four with the, uh, with the uh, Bonin. And then I'll bring them up to five and then four each for the, for the Bulgrins themselves. Find these guys here. I might lose a hive groom. <laughs> yeah, these guys are, are, are pretty nasty here. I know, it's so weird form. with you have units, um, if people played a lot of like 7th edition or if you're coming back from like an older edition and you look at models that really weren't any good or you didn't see on the table, GW almost exclusively made those models better, um, which is kind of cool if you were playing for a while and you had them. Um, but you know, it's just one of those things where if you're like, wow, why are three bully grins rocking a monstrous creature in close combat so hard? It's 8th edition. Just everything has changed. 
Um, also, Josh misspoke a little bit for it to use his uh, counter-offensive stratagem to be able to kind of strike first before my Hive Crown. It's two command points, oh, not one. Points. So okay. he's got four. So I have four um, left. He is a guard player, so they are known to cheat. So watch that <laughs> out if you're paying attention to him. So. That's right, that's right. This is kind of old back from like 6th and 7th edition where they had the cheat to be good, but now they're actually just good. So <laughs> Alright, so I need uh, three up soon. Alright. So to wound here, I am strength 7. Oh, too high. Three is, three is here. Alright. What's the AP? So it looks like we've got seven. Uh, AP minus one. Okay. For that so Bow Green Maul. Fives, and I have six wounds left on seven, so I need to save at least two of these. <laughs> Five up, save. Oh, I've got three. Okay, cool. So it took four wounds, so I got two left. So we are just hanging out. Um, I am down to the lowest possible wound count, like on the table. Um, so I get to go next. I do have to make it one attack with that tail, like I keep mentioning, but it's on a five to hit. Nothing. Three attacks inside of the wings. I do get to reroll ones, but I need fives to hit. Boxcars again, so I do get two of those. All right. Then fours to wound, and nothing. So just monstrous creatures in close combat, not what they <laughs> used to be at all. Um, all right. So now we got a morale phase, so we have uh, two units of guardsmen real quick that are going to have to take a morale check um, after the unit of guardsmen hits back. Alrighty. So, <clears throat> these guardsmen over here with the auto cannon team, um, so two attacks up front there, and then uh, one from the sergeant. Obviously I'll consolidate in, there's not much to consolidate there, but you know, we kind of get the idea. Get a little wiggle. Yeah, yeah, a little wiggle. Um, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> so, three attacks here. Force. And then this beautiful strength three. So six. No, no, no. Um, and then I actually have my tanks attacking yeah, the tanks back attack as well. Back. Look at that. It's so weird. It takes so long to get used to. I, I have know. played probably about seven or eight games of 8th edition right now, and I'm still not used to tanks fighting back. Um, if you're somebody that plays a vehicle heavy army, everything fights back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's just kind of like it. Kind of like it. <laughs> All right, so Pask is still at 10 wounds, so he has his full three attacks back. Uh, he's hitting on sixes, though, unfortunately. Uh, nothing there. And then, uh, let's see here, my other Executioner. Um, he's at full wounds as well, so he'll get these uh, full three attacks, hitting on sixes, and nothing there. So although they do get to strike back, it's still on sixes. Okay. So. And did you, did, you execute, did you do your execution, you said? I did, I did. Okay. So, nothing there. So, morale check for Some the morale team and guards. Yep. So, I lost uh, two guys over here from um, my regular infantry squad without One the auto cannon. One day. So, go on there. So, so I'm all set. And then, um, over on the auto cannon team, I lost four guys. Their leadership is seven. So, they go ahead and lose two guys. Because 4 plus 5 equals 9, leadership 7, brings me down. They lost 4 guys. Yep, 4 guys. Yeah. Okay, I see how it is. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so, still got the sergeant there, and I'm sure he will be out next round. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Alright, so Imperial Guard, <laughs> turn 2. Alright, guys, uh, Bomba 2. Into my movement phase, if you're in movement phase, astronauts are movement phase. I'm gonna actually start by disembarking my scions over here. So disembark three inches and then move six. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do it all within Rawr. one uh, one uh, movement here. So I obviously kind of want to stay away from these gene stealers a little bit. That way I can pop some shots into them. But I also want to stay away from that guy. He wants just to give <laughs> hugs. That's what he does to give hugs, so I'm going to actually pop back behind here, that way I get some cover as well. I like sure to give hugs. Mine. Put my melts in the back. Although it doesn't matter in this edition. <laughs> exactly. Also, you don't have to roll, like, run over that stupid barricade, it's like you're actually right. trained. And then you're going to back, back, back it up. Yeah, and then I'm going to move my Torox. So the Torox is down to four wounds. So only it has a 10-inch movement now versus 14. 
Let's see here. I don't want to move this guy. I'm going to just back him up over here. Okay, I'm going to as well. And then, of course, I don't want my tanks staying in combat, so oh, we got to move why? these guys around as well. So, they are still at uh, within the 7 to 12 remaining wound range, so they actually still get their, uh, what was it, a 10-inch move, if I'm not mistaken? Yep, that's what I'm learning. Full combat somehow cannot kill fucking Pask. Excuse my language. We're not going to make that explicit. Alright, pop him down In fairness, here. you would swear too if after multiple rounds of combat you had only done two wounds with 600 points of your army. <laughs> we'll just back Pask up a little bit. And I think that is... Well, nope, we still got a couple guys here. Let's go ahead and move my sergeant out of combat here. He still gets his six inch. So three inch down, three inch over. He's just going to chill out right there, pointing at my tank. And then we got another sergeant over here. He's just gonna move out of there. Can't really do much. So. And. See Mike looking at my man store in peace. <laughs> Kinda makes me wanna move him. You can still see him, can you? He can. It's like All the right. only thing on the floor you can see. So the Exocrines are um, amazing characters, especially in this edition. They were they were all right in seventh, but you don't ever want to move them. Um, so I mean, because it literally cuts your shooting in half and also lowers one to hit. So it's it's kind of an awful thing. You know, their gun is 36 inch range, but like place them wisely is like the best thing I can tell you. All right. So the end of my movement. Um, psychic. Big psychic phase. Yeah. All right. That's done. That's all fun. Right. All right. <laughs> Shooting! Alrighty, so um, again, we we'll kind of put some tokens down to mark the items that move that I can't shoot with because they pulled out of combat. So we have my Executioner here, Pask of course, and then my Torox over here. Just reminding me that I can't shoot with those guys. Tyrants just want to give hugs. <laughs> and they just, no one wants it. just don't like hugs, man. Alrighty, so... Let's go ahead and shoot with my Scions first. So I really want to pop some shots into those Gene Stealers. So um, these guys are going to hit on a 3-up. And they have their Hot Shot Laz Guns, which give me a rapid fire of 1. 18 inch range. So, already, so 9 inch. Yep, so all those guys. Yep, 9 inch. We are okay. So there should be a... Uh, yep. Four hot shots and the last pistol. So I'm looking at eight hot shots plus last pistol here. Hitting on threes. Those ones. Love it. Alrighty. More of them. And then these are just gonna be strength three here. But only strength three? Yeah, man. Hot shot last guns, but they're AP minus two, which Fast is why they're different than regular last guns. So two. Two. All right. So five of them invulnerable because Gene Steelers actually got good this edition. And Snake Eyes makes no <laughs> one good. So it doesn't really matter who you are. So, all right. The Gene Steelers going down. Alrighty. So, um, I also have two Melta Guns in there. So let me just go ahead and try to roll hit with these guys. So one hits. And then strength eight. All right, so then I'll do a wound. Okay. AP minus four here. Still going five and vulnerable. Alrighty. And nothing. Yep. And then they're just one wound models, right? Yes. Okay. So otherwise, it'd be D6. Alrighty. Again, I can't shoot with my Torox. Um, can't shoot with my tanks. So, really, all I have left is um, my Wyverns and one, my one Sergeant over here. So, uh, let's, let's try this. Do the wounds count as part wings? of the model? Yeah, I think so. In, in right. eight, they do now. Well, what the heck? Let's try to shoot a last pistol into your. Uh, right. In combat, I see how it is. Oh, I can't shoot in combat. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Once again, Ashen Militarian players. Oh, yeah, last pistol I can. What's the distance on the last pistol? It's twelve inches, my friend. 
Oh, that is a hefty 12 inches. All right, you're right on there. So five All hits. Right. So five hits. And it's not gonna work. All right, so. Gotta always watch those Imperial Guard players. <laughs> always trying to cheat you. All right, so Wyvern. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this Wyvern at your uh, Stormlord here. Okay. Let's actually try to bring him down. So 46 shots. Um, so that will be 13. Okay. Well, I actually kind of like this better than the templates. You know, it does speed the game up. And oh, think, uh, so much better than the barrage. Oh man, yes. That barrage led to just so many annoying issues with people. Yeah, trying to look over the uh, look over your template and see how many guys are underneath. All right, so we are hitting on fours with these. These are gonna be uh, strength four with no Stormlord you said is T6? Yep. That's a five. So we got three. Strength four, no no AP. Okay. So you said you got four or five? Uh just three. Oh three. Alright, three ups. Two, and then catalyst. Alright, take him down to four wounds. Alright, uh, heavy bolt right here. And we need another. So we say take him down to four here. So most things in the tier in the army, once they get down to four wounds, they drop down to a lower category, but the Swarm Lord is dropped down at three. So I'm not quite as frustrated as I was, but I'm still not pleased. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna try to pop the other Wyvern into him. I mean, it's, uh, so oh, that's a lot here. of hit. Should have done something about that. Yeah. Alright. Uh, hitting on fours here. And then a uh, sweet bullet. Just more. Okay. Three up. And we're All good. Set. All right, heavy bolter for that one as well. Two hits, and then five. Two. Ooh, two. Okay, three ups. Heavy oh, bolter is minus God. one. Yep. Catalyst. Oh, oh yeah, two you're, five. All all right. Right. you're all set. You're all set. All right. I think that's it for my shooting here. Nobody else can really shoot. Okay. All right. So combat. Um, I will spend two command points to go first. Alright. Sounds good. I can't spend two command points to go first, because we don't have a single other combat to go to, and he gets to do it, and I'm annoyed. <laughs> if you play Magic the Gathering, I keep thinking that command points are like instant behaviors, and I've done this in every single game, and this won't be the last game that I do it in, so everyone that's standing around immediately just starts shaking their head at me in a very condescending way, so it's going to keep happening. <laughs> Alrighty, so 13 total attacks. Yeah, bye buddy. Hitting on threes. Oh, hitting on fours. Hit on fours, minus yeah, one? Yeah, because it's minus one because they have the horror. So it's minus one to hit. Alright, take that three out of there then. Didn't do a lot, but you know, hey, String you save by one. Ooh. Alright. Ooh. Alright there. Five. five. Alright, so. This is uh, minus one. So okay. five, five ups. Oh! <laughs> He's still alive! He's still alive! I actually didn't really want to be alive even almost, oh, but... Oh, yeah. alright. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Alright. Alright. So, attack first with the tail. Fives. Oh, he oh, gets it! Oh, man. Strength eight. So, uh... Yeah, so, three. Up. Yeah, three up. Alright, uh, so that with the tail, believe it or not, is minus three. So you're minus gonna use three your, AP? Yeah, minus, it's your involve save. Alright, so four up involve from the brew shield. Good. Oh, man, they have not gotten yeah, through man. that thing at all. Uh, then the other three attacks, fives, one goes off, one goes through. and then you Ooh. gotta roll it in a box, four up, gets it. Uh, so it's minus two, so you're four from vulnerable. All right, four up one. There it is, there and it is uh, D3 wounds. Ooh, D3, alright. So two. Oh, two, so that kills a guy. Yeah. Alright. 
Okay. Uh, morale phase for you. Morale phase, yeah. I actually have taken morale check here. What's your leadership for the Bully Grins? Bully Grins, oh man, they are uh, leadership eight. Surprisingly, they're higher than infantry. Okay. So I took just one dice. Yep. Two wounds here, right? So, it goes so even if you roll wounds versus the number of. Nope, so just one model. So, so it's going to work anyways because yep, you have so, leadership, yeah, I, so you're yeah, good. Uh, same thing for my genes, there's their leadership nine, so even though they lost three models. Yeah, perfect. Good not doing that with them. Um, so. so we will be back right here with uh, Tyranids turn three. All right, so Tyranids turn three. Um, so gene stealers, we're only going to move the eight. We don't have to advance. We're still trying to chase down our vehicle because right. we want to just make some friends and they keep running away from all of us. Hive crone with its ridiculous movement range. Markers here. Um, do do. And we are going to. So with our Hormagons, we're going to move and advance. So two, so I get a full movement of ten out of them. And they move quick. You know, with the advancing thing they do, and Tyranids yeah, yeah. have a lot of shenanigans to be able to get them into combat nice and quickly. So it's sort of a nice little feature to be able to have. Um, so I was just going to stay there because he's just upset at life in general. Um, if you can move my Moloch, yeah, like right over here. Alright. He wants a hug also. Um, and we will just leave the tyrant where he is for right now. What I would really like to do is... I, I would. <laughs> um, you know, it's kind of one of those crazy things where there's a lot of just single yeah, guys around yeah. there. Um, this is a really annoying thing if you're doing like a kill point battle. Yeah. Um, but we're just going to be able to do this. So we'll play it by ear. So, all right. So Tyranid, everything moved that I wanted. Yeah, so Tyranid Psychic Phase. So first things first. I'm the lone guardsman that's over here by our Moloch. Oh, leave him alone. We're going to smite the ever-living daylights out of him with the Hive Tyrant. And it goes off on a 9. No, nothing I can do. And so it's just D3 Mortal Wounds, yep, so it's 1, so that guy got roasted. Smite is closest to enemy unit. 18 inches. I am hearing something from our judge that I don't agree with, but he's probably right because he is always right. It's kind of it's annoying. Really I already have a wife, but I now apparently have a judge too. So Smite has to be the closest enemy unit, which ironically enough I always was doing because I was flying around earlier. <laughs> But now I'm even more annoyed. So you so, just smited my pass. So huh? pass took a smite. So, so he's down to six. He ate one. I'm now really disgruntled because that completely changes the way I want to do for this turn. So this is kind of silly, silly shenanigans right now. So I'm going to have to do something even more silly. Um, so I'm going to ask a judge's ruling right, real quick. If I have two weapons that are the exact same, can I fire one at one target and one at the other? Judge is nodding yes, so I actually like when he's right this time because this is going to make things a lot simpler. Um, so the rest of my psychic phase real quick, uh, we're going to throw Smite again uh, to pass because why not? From the Swarm Lord, goes off on a 9, D3, so two wounds on the Pask. Swarm Lord is also going to cast Catalyst on himself again, goes off on a 7, only needed a 6. And then lastly, we're going to do Onslaught, which or not Onslaught, we're going to do the Horror from the Hive Tyrant onto the Bully Grins again. And I actually don't think that goes off, because I'm pretty sure the Horror is a 6, and I rolled a 5. The Horror is a 6, so that's not going to work there. So they're still going. Alright, Tyranid Shooting Phase. So we're going to just start over here at this side of the table. So first things first is the uh, Hive Crone is going to be used it's a drool cannon over here onto the unit of guardsmen so it's d6 hits five finally does something 
One of my scions. Strength six out of the scion, so twos. So four wounds at minus one AP. Minus one AP. All right, they are base of a four up. So yeah. five, five up. up. You said that was four wounds, mm -hmm. correct? All right, so three. So three, three died. Three died. And then we will do the stinger salvo. So four is to hit. Two hits. Okay. And three is to wound. One wound. Yep. And Once again, three. minus one. Minus one. So good. So one dies. One dies. That's four so far. And then lastly, the tentaclids, because just why not? So two tentaclids. Two hits. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And two wounds. Two wounds. Wow. I should have done that on the vehicle. Would have popped that <laughs> thing like a cherry. <laughs> AP on this one as well. Uh. Tentaclids are nothing, so to get your full save. Four up, so it takes another one dies. Oh, there's a multiple. All right, excellent. Um, and then you guys keep seeing me like bending my head down on the table. Probably it's going to keep checking out his exocrine because I really don't want him to move. <laughs> so he's got 36 inch range. So I am going to light pass up here real quick. At least I'm going to try to. So. Pask has how many wounds left? He has four left. Not too many, fortunately. All right. So now is when I have to figure out how bold and risky do I want to go. So what I'm going to do is we are going to take a, you know, Pask is going to suck for state of five. He really hasn't been doing much, man. Yeah, but I don't have a lot of combat. I don't want to charge him. Um, all right, so we're going to do something a touch different here first. So Hive Tyrant, we're going to do six shots into the Lone Guardsman that I wanted to smite, but he's not able to be smiteable. So threes. I miss Twin Lane. You get the feeling he's going to die. And then twos. Four wounds. AP? Uh, minus one. Minus one, so give me four sixes. Oh, oh I got two. <laughs> But he's dead, so that's a kill point. So as a quick kill point update, um, I so far have, on turn three, have not lost anything. So I have three kill points here, um, right there. I also have first blood as well. Um, and so, and Josh is working on getting that first kill point right now. Somehow my hive crone is still alive. <laughs> um, he shouldn't be, but he is. Uh, so the Tyrant's going to shoot his other shots into um, Pask. So it's six more shots. Witness Twin Links. <laughs> and it's going to be fives to wound. And one wound. One wound on Pask. AP? Minus one. Minus one. Four up. That's a one. Okay. <clears throat> so that didn't help me at all. So we're gonna try to do all, I needed two wounds here to make this more realistic and I'll explain why in a second. Um, so we are going to do the death spitters from the pod into Pask as well. So again, that is going to end up being 15 shots. I need fives to hit. Whoa. Maybe those fives actually work. <clears throat> Thank you, Dice Math. Did not. <laughs> so much better than it should be. Um, and then I need fives or sixes again, because you're still T8. Right. And two. two. AP on this guy? Uh, my, it's going to be minus one, so you're at four. four. Boom, takes the wound. One. All right, so that's all I wanted. So now we're trying to do math. Um, so basically what I wanted was to be able to shoot half the exocrine shots over there, then half the exocrine shots over into the melted people. Um, main reason why is because melted guns, if one happens to go off on Overwatch, is really going to ruin my Hive Crone's day. <laughs> so we just want to kind of avoid doing that. And if both go off, then I'm just really in for a bad time. So the six shots from the Exocrine first and the Pask, second into those guys over there. All so right. into Pask first, threes. Yeah. So we'll take all those. And then we need fives to wound. And we're looking Whoa. at three wounds. And then it is minus three. You're going to get cover, so you do get five saves. Right, five 
Oh, whoops. Whoops. Help if I roll. There you go. And it's damage two, so that one's gonna go yep. through. So two of them go through, and no matter what. And pass starts. dies, and then you can roll to hopefully it doesn't explode. Let's see if he explodes. <laughs> nope. Ah, oh, beautiful. Close, close. That would have been a bad. That is a warlord kill as well. So we add a warlord point and a kill point to right there. Um, and then we're going to shoot the other six shots from the Exocrine into the unit of Melthus over there. Four shots. And that's going to be four wounds. AP minus three. I'm sorry, where is this into my Torox? No, to oh, your little sorry. dudes. AP minus three, they only have a four up save, so they... Have You'll still get sixes because oh, yeah. you're in cover. There you go, thank you. I said three of them? Yep. Nope. Still gone. Still gone. But you got to roll the for future, him. Yeah, <laughs> it makes me feel better that I got to roll. Yeah. It's so much nicer now with some of the 8th edition rules for everything. And then, <clears throat> any other shooting? I uh, do not have any. So we are going to try to make some charges here real quick. Alrighty. Um, I screwed up because I did not cast Onslaught onto my Hormagaunts which was the entire point of moving up the board. And I advanced with them. Onslaught allows me to advance and then charge, um, but I didn't. So they just get to stand there and they get to oh, look man. just so pretty, uh, but not do anything. So, <laughs> where'd your priest go, by the way? Oh, he's, he's hiding behind the building over here. Oh, I can't even see him. Yeah. That's right. the point. I see. <laughs> I see you, babe. <laughs> well, I would need a seven to get into your priest from the Hive Tart. So, Hive Tyrant into the Priest. Oh, um, yeah. I'm going to spend two command points. I'm going to spend one command point to re-roll this two. So I'm going to leave the four here. Makes sense. And he gets is. in there. there so he's in there. Does he have a pistol? Does he want to overwatch? Heck yeah, I'll overwatch. You never know, man. You never know. He could do eight wounds. No. Yeah. And then Swarm Lord is going to be charging into that whip. Alrighty. So, watch as well. Get there. So, overwatching with this will be interesting because I think they actually get all their mortar shots, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, they do. Vehicle overwatch can be really dangerous now. Yeah. So, 46 shots. Ooh. So, I get 17 shots. That's a lot of shots. Hoping to get some sixes here. <clears throat> I'm hoping you don't, but that's just me. <laughs> I heard. There's only sixes. Uh, just two. Okay. Yeah, these are the box. And... And fives. So just one there. So one wound? One. Alright, three up. Got it. Good. Um, and then three shots from... Ooh, look at that. From the okay. uh, heavy bolter out front there. And... Okay. So he gets into there in the so combat. He's all set. Uh, Moloch is just going to go in to try to get a hug on your tank. Sure, sure. So the executioner. So we're in. He's in again, and then Overwatch with this. Yep. So it'll be uh, D6 from the cannon up top, and then 2D3 on the bottom. So that will be 6 for these 2D3, and then 2. So that will be 8. Ones. Yeah, I got two ones. Two ones. Is that two wounds? Let me see here. Yeah, how it works in this edition. Let me check. So, two wounds would be so nice. <laughs> uh, fires a supercharged plasma cannon. Oh, you roll one fire more hit. So I didn't fire a supercharged. So you're so golden. I'm okay. Yep. All right. Sixes to hit here. I got three sixes. And these are going to be strength seven. One wound there at EP minus three. Okay. Uh, at EP minus three? Correct. So I need a six, and I'll get it, so I just take a look. Right. Last cannon here, last one. And there's nothing. You want to put that 11 over there? Sure. I can't take that. Get rid of those things. Um, Jeed Stealers charging the Torox. We're in. Overwatch as well. There we go. Strength seven. Oh, no. All right. 
five of them vulnerable, otherwise Dean's to charge isn't the best. Ah. <laughs> Good old vehicle overwatch. So since the Gene Seer has gotten to combat, we're going <clears> to <throat> try to charge the Hive Crone over here to the Torox as well. Um, I'm going to need basically a... There, have to get within that Phantom Inch nowadays, so I'm going to need a 9 to get through there, but it's already locked in combat, so might as well try it. Oh, an 8. eight. Oh, man. Okay. That didn't work. And then the Hormagons just kind of hang out there want to be silly. So we're going to run through uh, Moloch's into combat. We're just going to do that one first because it's the page that I have open. So the first thing is with the tail. Four up to hit. Nothing. With the mouth. Does hit. And then this is going to be strength six as well. So you're toughen at eight, right? I'm sorry, for which one? The executioner. The executioner? Yeah, it's I eight. think we just never pushed it in. Right? Yeah, cool. that's okay. All right, so yep. So uh, eight, so eight. it didn't work there. So then we've got six more attacks. Not really expecting to do a lot of damage. I just really want to tie him up for a little bit. Um, so this is also... Um, Reroll hits a one, basically as well, and I have seven attacks because I have multiple pairs of uh, sighting towns as well. So I did get one one that I get to reroll. Three hits and the one. Reroll, four hits. All right, and then once again I still need fives and not getting anything. Are you locking them up or no turn? Exactly. Gene Stealer time. So my Gene Stealers are going to have three attacks. We are going to use the Rending Claws on them as well. So two hits. Still need fives to wound. One wound and one's a Ren. Mm -hmm. So that one's just going to take a wound. Alrighty, on my tank again, correct? Yep. Alrighty, so he is apparently still at full health here. So he has 11 remaining. I don't think he's at full health. Oh no, dude, time. you're Torox. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Torox. Oh, okay, alright. He's got three right, left, right. yeah. So he's got three left, and then you said there was uh, another one as well that I need to roll for? Uh, no, I didn't get the other one. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So didn't didn't do the damage. Alright, uh, Swarm Lord on your Wyvern. Alright, sure. So it's T6? Uh, yeah, it's T6. Alright, so the first one with the tail that we have to do because it's stupid. I still haven't hit it yet because I'm bad mouthing it the whole time. Uh, twos. So, four hits, and I'm still at strength seven, so threes, and three wounds. It's at AP minus three. So are you at? Uh, so I am, my save is a three up, so, so six, six up. ups. And they all go through. Okay, so it's D6 each. D6 each, wow. So all we're right. looking so at nine long. damage. All right, so I only... Finally, he got to swing at something. Yeah, so I had nine left, so you zero me out exactly. So... With that, then, let's see if uh, it explodes. It does not. Okay, the Sword Lord will consolidate. And so we're going to jump him three inches over here. Which one would you say is closest there, Josh? Oh, man. Between my tanks? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's an exact way to measure it out, right? <laughs> we got about four and a quarter here. I think, I think my Wyvern's going to be closest, to be honest. And yeah, Wyvern definitely. Alright, so move three inches closer to your Wyvern. Well, that's my fortification counts. <laughs> oh, does it? That, I mean, it would. Alright, so then I'm already there, so I'm already all locked right, in with the right. fortification. That's kind of silly, but it's 100% uh, correct. Alright, cool. Alright. Uh, <laughs> that is crazy, because I wouldn't have thought of that. Alright, so Hive Tyrant then against your Priest. Alright. <clears throat> so once again, I've got five attacks. Be hitting on twos. Uh, five. If you don't have priest, you can go bye bye. Wounding on twos. So four wounds. It's AP dash and just one damage. So four wounds. Four wounds on that guy. That's three AP dash. Uh, let's see if what his save is. Uh, let me look it up real quick. He's got a four up and vulnerable, I think. He does have a four up and vulnerable, but his save is just regular six up. So okay. four up. Look at that. Saved. Like a boss. So he is at three wounds left. Okay. And then lastly, 
good old hive crone who's just lasted so much longer than he had any right <laughs> to be doing uh first with the tail so, attack oops sorry i think i might spend two command points here to interrupt you i got four left Woo! I just go for it Okay. Tried to catch you before you rolled. So. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You did it. I didn't give you time. It was just a tail. It was just a tail. The right? tail's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I still got my uh, bonehead in there. Four attacks, base plus one, and then uh, three attacks base with the other one plus one for the uh, prayer hems since he is still in contact or within six inches there. So I need threes here to hit. Uh oh. And then strength seven. Yep. Threes. So, four. Okay, four or five ups. Oh, oh, oh. I thought you had it for a second. I was like, no. All right. All right. You lived way longer than you had any right to. Good job. And then I will consolidate three inches. All right, so that is I think my combat. priest has to attack back, man. Your tanks do attack. Yeah, come so on, don't forget about the priest. He actually gets three attacks. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, one skill four up. Two hits. But well, he's only strength three here. So. Okay. Uh, what's his toughness on the... Six. Yeah, so I need a six to win there. Okay. He's only strength three. All right, um, and then your executioner tank somehow gets to hit back. Yeah, yeah. Because it's weird. <laughs> so he is uh, still at full strength, surprisingly. So if I remember correctly, it's three attacks um, on sixes. So nothing here. Okay. So that is the end of Tyranid turn three. It is now time for bottom of turn three Imperial Guard turn. All right, so time to get my Torox out of this combat. Um, again, the bottom of three here. It's it's not looking so good for the Imperial Guard. But it's okay. We got so also, people expected a, uh, like a morale check too, since the Gene Sears took one, but the leadership is still too high. Um, so they're still completely fine with everything. So ready. <clears throat> All right, so go ahead and move this tank out of combat as well. He gets his full eight-inch move. Um, since he has his full wounds, I just wish I could shoot after I move, unfortunately. <laughs> but at least I can move out of combat, I suppose. So, shimmy him, mm, shimmy him up. I will, of course, get charged again next turn, but at least I'll get my overwatch here. So, we were talking during the break, and I think what I'm going to do is, since pistols can shoot into combat, I think I'm gonna shoot a storm right, with right, my uh, my it. one remaining sergeant here. I see so it. that means I gotta clear a path for him here. Uh, I'll take that minus one to hit with this guy, and just make sure. Yep, that would definitely be within 12 inches. With my sergeant over here, six inches, and sure enough, he's within 12. We're going for the moral victory right now. Going for the moral <laughs> victory. We gotta. We gotta. All right. Cool. Um, I think that's it for movement. So, going on the psychic phase, no psychic phase obviously, uh, okay. shooting, that's where it all begins. So, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and do my uh, four d6 uh, storm shard mortars, um, I'm actually going to shoot into this guy's <clears throat> Alright, so we get eight plus six, so fourteen total. Yeah, this isn't going to be good. Minus one though. Yep. So Should be minus two, one. but I couldn't charge and my venom throat's too far away. Alright. <clears throat> Didn't have fives. Could have been on sixes. No, I know, but you gotta get that last one. Two. Alright. Not too many here. There's string four. Oh. Just one. Just one? Just one. Uh, AP? AP dash. Oh, no. Oh. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's AP dash. Oh, yeah. Here it is. T shirt save. Alright, heavy bolters. Uh, show me fives. Nope. Ah, oh, look at that. Took that minus one. Alright, another one. 
I don't think that's gonna run. This one is AP minus one. Ah. All right, cool. So the shot of the game right here, last pistol. Love it. Stonewood. Love it. Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna spend a command point. There it is. And I am gonna re-roll that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> the moral victory is not to no, be today. No, no, no. Sorry, little guy. All right. Um, that's it for my shooting. I can't do much else. Uh, so we're in combat. There are no other. Charges, so I think we'll just go ahead and jump into combat. Okay. Um, uh, I will spend so, or spend two because I can. No, I'm not going to because it's not an instinct. I'm not playing Magic Gathering, and I don't get to pick first until he picks one time. Ugh. All right, so come my, on, GW. My Vulcans are going to attack. <laughs> Minus one to hit. Oh, I need fours. Fours, I need fours. Did. Oh, that did matter. Yep. So oh, get rid of that three. There are two threes. Two threes. Seven. Threes. So roll three. All right. And what's Minus th one AP. All right. So three wounds. So force. Uh, so take one. I'll take one wound. All right. So that drops me down. To seven. Five to seven. Seven. There we go. All right. Alright, attacking back, uh, Hive Tyrant, I'm gonna use his tail first. Um, and I'm gonna be attacking your priest. Alrighty. As well, so I want that KP. Hits. And that'll be a wound. Um, so it's AP dash. Alright, so four of Rosaries. He's good. Of course it's good. <clears throat> Alright, then four more attacks on your priest. Hitting on twos. Wounding on twos. Four wounds. Show me force. Look at that. Wow. One wound. Making a champ over here. Okay. Okay. Do I attack the priest? Yeah, of course. Uh, so I think the priest has, if I remember correctly, definitely got a bump up from last edition. He has three attacks. But it says you can add one attack to characteristic to all models. Um, within six inches of the priest, so I'm not sure if that includes the priest himself. Apparently it does, so... I'll let it go. Attacks. Yep. <clears throat> and he is hitting on fours. Strength three? Yep. Sixes. Oh. Nope. Nope. Alright. Um, Swarm Lord is going to be attacking the, um, fortification, because that's, <laughs> that's just what he does. Alright, let me, let me, uh... I'm hitting on twos. Oh my gosh, three ones? It's, it's a T8. 18 wounds. Is it really? It's 18 wounds, yeah. Um, alright. That is just <laughs> ridiculous. Three ones in the Swarm Lord, of course. Swarm, you're killing me right now. And it's T8? T8. Alright, fives. Two fives. Oh, there you go, two fives, two fives. So, 2d6 damage, that's 10 wounds. Alright, uh, AP? Uh, minus three. Minus three, alright. My save there. Um, so ten wounds, it brings it down to eight. Yep. Wow, I really thought I was going to be able just to take that thing out, but apparently, <laughs> apparently I can't. It is a sliding scale, just like anything else. So now it gives a five up in bone save, rather than... Okay. It's still, kind of, it's still a cool feature to be able to have. Yeah, I still yeah. think you'll see them on the table, so... Uh, alright. Is that your turn? That is it. Okay. We don't have any more anymore. So I think we're all set. Yep. Let me know when you're ready to go. Alright, Tyranid's turn four. Uh, top turn four. So we're going to try to do as much damage as possible right here. So we are going to just move him over to uh -oh. one inch. <clears throat> just going to like to eat his face a little bit. Last Gene Stealer coming along as well. Um, it's finally going to die, huh? I can actually still see stuff with this. This is kind of cool. Uh, Venomthropes. We're going to move them up. Once again, even though they look like lictors, they are Venomthropes. Keep that in mind. Moloch. I don't even know what to do with that Moloch. Moloch. 
All right, we're gonna just move the hormigons like all over here. They have an eight inch base move, so I'm just piling some things together. And then, oh, knocking over terrain, because that's what Tyrion needs to do. And if you can just move the Moloch sure. to right there. Moloch has a nine inch movement. Flies around that board. And, we are feeling good. I wish I could smite somebody else, but I can't. Yeah, I got a sergeant over here. I can't, the closest thing to hit is going to be <laughs> ah, the stupid right, thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Voice, you so people. psychic phase, uh, hive tyrant, smite. We're going to do it on your priest. Goes off on an eight. All right, nothing I can These do. Three mortal it. wounds. One. So he's one. got one wound All left. Right, still alive. Um, on to your... Uh, Hmm. I actually don't really want to do anything. Might as well do Catalyst and the Swarm Lord. Goes off on a six. So we've got Catalyst again. And we will actually just jump right into the shooting phase. So first things first, we're going to do the um, Hive Crone. Two Tentaclids onto your vehicle. One hits. Uh, doesn't do anything. Okay. Drool Cannon. D6. Oh, so four. We need fours to wound. So two wounds on the Torox. Torox. Sorry. Any AP? Minus one. Minus one. So four ups here. Oh, takes two. So he's got two. one left. <clears throat> and then Stinger Salvo from him as well. Wow. One hit. Five to wound and doesn't get it. Well, that's stupid. Uh, we will do the... This exocrine is going to drive me crazy. Look at the game. What I can hit, what I can't hit. <laughs> Alright, we will do, um, believe it or not, the Venom Thropes are going to use their Lasher Tendrils onto your vehicle with okay, the shooting sure. attack. So they're Assault 2, so it's 6 shots. Um, so 4 is to hit. Two hits. Five's the wound. Nothing. All right, and so we'll do the full X screen. We're gonna do both shots. Um, right at the. How many wounds does that the executioner have? Executioner. Um, he should be full strength if I remember correctly. So it should be uh, twelve. Okay. So yeah, so we'll do both rounds of shooting right at the executioner. Yep. Can see twelve. It. Threes. And then I need fives. So we are looking at five wounds. Um, you're going to get six up saves because you got covered. Right. Ooh. So it's a AP minus four? Minus three. Oh, minus three? Uh, so it'd be five up so. Oh, you're two yeah. base? No, I'm three base. Yeah, minus three. Okay. Fix this. Oh, you would get five ups. Did you roll five yeah, up? I rolled two fives. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you take so four wounds. I take three, right? Because it's five wounds. Two went through, right? Uh, two, two saved. Out of five. So, okay. so you so take I six take... wounds. Uh, they're two damage. They're, they're two damage. Yeah. Okay, right. So we're at <laughs> half. Alrighty. Which is one of these die. Easier to see here. Six. And then we will do all the death spitters. So many dice. <laughs> Alright, fives again. One, two, three, four. Good math. And then fives again to wound. One wound. Uh, four up. Oop, takes it. It's down to five. And charging phase. Alrighty. So we will be charging the Hive Crone into your dude. It gets in on a four, crazy enough. Into the Torox, right? Yeah. Alright, uh, Overwatch. Strike seven. Dance it. Four up. Yeah. 
And then charge the gene stealer. Both are in. Where is the gene stealer behind that tank? <laughs> and then charging the. Oh my gosh. Uh, charge the spore into your tank. Care to overwatch. I will overwatch. So D6 from the turret. And then D3. So that will be three. Five. It's a lot of plasma. It's a plasma. It doesn't get hot. Nothing. Alright. Last game. Last game. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oops. 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 Nope. Alright, so they're in, plus the Venomthropes. In. So, brah. Brah. Brah, brah, brah. Brah, brah, brah. Um, and then lastly, the Gaunts into the Bully Grins. No Overwatcher. They're in. Especially since I'll just tuck these guys in. Yep. What was your movement? Uh, it was like nine. It was like nine. Yeah. I also pile and consolidate six, so it's like. <laughs> oh well, yeah. So it doesn't. I'll be in there. All right. So um, let's just start over there. Um, hive crone first. Tail. Doesn't hit. Three attacks. One hits. No wounds. Good lord. Gene stealer. <laughs> One hits. Boom! Blows it up. Which one? Gene Stealer. Uh, Thoughts? Yeah. Okay. So if it explodes, I think this has the explode special rule. Let's just see if it matters. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So we'll check that one in a second later. Yeah. Because since it's a vehicle, it does. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, we're gonna do the Venom Thropes then. Which is weird, because you never really get Venom Thropes into combat. <laughs> it does have the explode special rule. Oh, okay. Um, so four is to hit. Wow. Okay, yeah. Venom Thropes. Apparently you really wanted to get into combat. Um, you also get to reroll wounds, so it's um, your T8, right? Correct. So I need sixes, but I get to reroll them. Good thing I get to reroll, because that wouldn't even wound anything. Uh -huh. I got a six off the table. <laughs> okay, so they just really wanted to hit. They didn't want to do right. anything else. Um, all right, and then the spore. We're gonna have D6 attacks. One, one. five to hit. Yes, hey, you got the hit. Five to wound. Oh, and it gets a wound. Look at that. AP. Uh, minus? No, nothing. Nothing. All right, three up. <laughs> oh, look at that. He takes it. Sucker. <laughs> All right, and then the gaunts into combat. Only have eight of them. Eight's all that I need, though. So, Hormagons, two attacks base, so we're looking at 16. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 10, 12, 14, 16. You get to reroll ones with these as well. Sure. I ain't even rolling ones, man. I mean, I will yeah. take that, I guess. Still a pretty good roll. Still a very good roll. <laughs> and again, fours, too. All right. And then T5, so we're going to hit on five. Or wound on five. Right. So, four wounds. Four wounds? Any AP? Uh, no. No. So. They have a four up save base, so. Oh, oh yeah, Jeez, one goes one. down. All right, and then the my first action of the phase, tyrant on this priest. All right, he's got how many wounds left? He has one. Okay, uh, tail hits wounds. AP uh, dash dash. Okay, either way, it'll be a four up here. Yep. Oh, nice. I am going to use my last command point. Okay. 
Yeah, alright. Alright, I like it. Alright, the other four attacks. You are out of, Oh, two ones, really? <laughs> Twos. Two wounds. Alright. Four up. Fours. Look at that. Still alive. <clears throat> Can I make him reroll one at the command point? I wish I could. Make it work. <laughs> um, alright, uh, you get to choose. Um, so, Bulgren. Okay. So, we, he will have five attacks, and I'm going to put him into the gaunts. Okay. So, threes here. Uh, fours, right? Because I did not. Nice one. No? I don't, didn't do the war. Okay. Um, is it going to be strength seven? Yep. So, T. Three. T3. So, two is correct. Yeah. So, five. Uh, minus AP is him, too. Minus one AP. I need five little dudes. Yeah, just grab. Once again, guard players trying to take more models out than <laughs> Always count your models with the guard players. Um, uh, Swarm Lord. Going to town. <laughs> yeah, that structure's going to be gone. It should be. <laughs> We're just going to do the bone sword attacks first. So, five hits. And I need fives to wound. Nothing. Are you kidding me right now? So you know you can move him out of combat. I was expecting to kill it. <laughs> I wasn't really <laughs> worried about that. Um, you know, I got two command points left. I'm going to do one to reroll the, a wound. Didn't even worry. I don't want to get that. All right, tail. No, a lot of ones. All right. All right. Um, I completely forgot to charge my Moloch, but I don't really care. So... Um, Consolidate over. <laughs> can. And then it's the end of the fight phase, so you roll a dice for the Venom Thropes, and then for your unit, if they're within there, if I roll a five or six, you get a mortal wound. Oh, okay. Mortal there wound. It is. More wound on my uh, Tank. execution, right? Yep. Okay. That actually does matter because that pulls them down to so stay up. Alright. Level here. So, um,. Morale check would normally apply to Gaunts, but they are within Synapse range, so they do not take a morale check as well. Um, bully Grins would automatically pass, because they only lost one model. Yep. So, your turn. Alright, so... Imperial Guard, bottom of four. Um, boom it. So again, consistently pulling my tanks out of combat. <laughs> Which is the best way to do the things. Best way to do it, yeah. Actually, let's see what their their movement is, because uh, obviously I'm down to another bracket here. Um, I am down to the last bracket, so they can only move four inches. Not very far. Not very far, Bradley. So four inches. Uh, Warman's gonna sit tight, and my sergeant is just gonna keep trying to pop shots. I believe in him. I believe in him too. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to pull my priest out of combat too. Okay. So I don't think. Well, you don't know that. And he has lived this long, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, that is uh, it for my movement. So, psychic. No, ta da. <laughs> Shooting. Shooting. Let's do this. Um, so, my priest is actually going to shoot into combat with his last pistol. Okay. So you're shooting into your uh, Gaunt. gaunts there, and he hits. Uh, strength three. That'll hit. That'll wound. T-shirt save. Nope. There you go. Wait, you fell back out of combat, so you can't. Oh, shoot. you're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Fear the guard. I was cheating. I'm, I'm still consistently trying to cheat. You're right. <laughs> All right. Um. The sergeant can't see him there. All right, so the other sergeant shooting into combat there, and he doesn't. All right, so the only other thing I really have to shoot is my wyvern. Can't shoot into combat. Um, hmm. Let's see here. I think we'll just try to shoot uh, that guy there. So, oh, all right. Oh. So, number she in the mall out? shots. Uh, yeah. He doesn't like being shot. So, um, I 
Hang on for a second. <clears throat> and then these are strength 4, which is your T7? Yep. Okay. No, I'm T6. Oh, T6? Yeah. yeah no, okay. <clears throat> so, five. Alright, all right, three ups. Takes one. Takes one. Alright. Down to uh, ten. Heavy bolter. Two bit. And. Okay. That's all I shoot. Alright. I have pistol onto this one, would you do that? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Uh, bully game combat. Yep. Bully game combat. Alright, so Bully Green still gets five attacks. Um, four base plus one from the Priest for War Hands. Hit on threes. There's a one. I'll try to shoot, I promise. <laughs> Were you shooting the Gaunts or that again? Yeah, the Gaunts. Okay. And that's three. Alright. Take. Exactly. Ah. Yeah, look at that. Hey, we got a kill point. Unfortunate, Gaunts. You guys did a good job. Probably could have cast Catalyst on them. That would have been a better use of my time. Um, Alright. Hive Tyrant. Yep. Consolidate. Um, not a two to wound. So that didn't work. Four attacks. The rest of them. Twos. And then threes. Two wounds. Let's see the plans. Dash. Uh, just be four up either way, I guess. So one more one. Okay. I believe that's it. Alrighty. Yeah, that's all I got. Okay. So we'll finish this up this last turn here real quick, because I think we should be able to do it. Alright, so Tyranid's turn five. Do a little bit of movement here. So we're going to fly the Hive Crone. He's got 30 inch range. Flying. Well within our rights to go do some things over here. Um, actually fine with where everything else is standing. Can you move the Moloch like sure. right about here? No, Moloch. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Bah, bah, bah. This guy. Yep. And right there. Yes. Well, can you be able to fit in that gap? I don't know if you will be able to. Yeah. So you have to stay an inch away from each other model, right? Am I hitting your guy? Your little dude? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Then I'm fine. You can leave him. Alright, alright. Alright, and then... Yeah, we'll leave it off. Uh, so, psychic phase, real quick. So, um, smite from the hive tyrant. Sure. Oh, no! The ones, I don't think they'll pass. No. <laughs> All right. So D three mortal wounds. You can roll. Oh, all right. Three. Poop. All right. Swarm Lord. Same thing. All right. So I smite. All right. <laughs> mighty, mighty. <laughs> One wound on that thing. On uh, who? Yeah, it's the closest, so it's your. Oh, okay, my team. Yep. <clears throat> what? Stormlord? Oh, Stormlord would be my character. Yeah, oh. it's that. That's why I took oh. it. Oh, I see, I see. I dropped the wrong one over here. Oh, you're good. Sorry about that. I wish. Alrighty, so. So it's down to seven. And then. Um, I'm good with the rest of the psychic phase. I don't need to do the other stuff, so we're good. All right, so shooting phase. Um, first thing is the tentaclids. Shooting your tank. Sure. Okay. Once again, Snake all right. Arrows. That's fine. Drill cannon, D6. Two. I need fives. One That's wound. One. Minus one, so you're at four. Oh. Nope. Okay. Two. He's down to two. Stinger salvo, fours. Whoa, all fours. Well, that's kind of weird. Four, four. Um, fives. Two more two. wounds. Uh, once again, four up save. Oops. He's sticking around. Okay. One more, so. And then Lasher Tendrils from 
the venom throw, so six, so hitting on fours. Three hits. And then I believe wounding on fours as well. Or actually wounding on sixes. And re-rolling. One six. Right. Re-roll the other two. One six. Right. AP dash, so you got your three up. Yep. Whoa, dude. Right. Is that his last wound? Last wound. Let's see if he explodes. Nope. Nope. He's Takes gone. it. All right, so the death spitters on your last little dude that's standing over there. Alrighty, sergeant. Yep. I'm hitting on five. Oh, really? Okay. That's quite a good. Two, three, and threes. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, he's yeah. So seven was. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying AP. Uh, cuts or minus one. Six yeah. Seven? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Seven, six, seven. Oh, three sixes. Yeah. That's pretty good. Alright, let's go. Alright, <laughs> and then Moloch firing. <laughs> Moloch firing all the shots at your wyvern. Alright. Or not Moloch, I mean the X-Grin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, good job, x -Grin. And your T6, right? The library. Yeah, T6 on the wood. So threes. Oh, so many twos. What's your armor on that? T6. No, what's your armor? Oh, three up save? Right, so you would get a six. You would get a five. Um, you get a five of armor because you're in cover. So I'm going to reroll this one too. How many wounds does that thing have? It has 11 total. Yeah. I'm going to use my last point to reroll the one. Alright, so seven wounds. Five ups. So that's ten. Oh. So close. So close. So close. So he's down to two? All right, uh, Moloch charges your wyvern. Watch. Yeah, I didn't really want that. Mm. So right, I'm hitting on sixes now since he only has two wounds left. So eight. Oh, it was Overwatch. You're always hitting on sixes. Yeah, twelve. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, so twelve. Whoa! Yeah, Four sixes. Though. Four yeah. sixes. I'm T6. Fives here. Yep. Three up. Good. Alright, so do combat with him first. Um, first thing is his tail. Hits. Okay. And then your T6, so four. So it's a wound. Um, I believe it's AP dash, though, so you still get your save. Good. And then the mouth. Nothing. And then seven normal attacks. Three roll ones. No ones. Good roll, buddy. Four up the wounds. Two. Two. AP dash. Alright, three ups. Good lord, die! Um, Alright, Swarm Lord. So, uh, I actually know Hive Tyrant goes first. So, tail. Hits. Wounds. Ooh, that's... So, D3. Ooh, D3. Three wounds. On my Vulgar, right? Yep. He is gone. You. Consolidate. Boom. Into your dude. Now, I get to rate make the rest of my attacks, right? Into my priest? No, you know, I'll use one of my weapons. That's stupid. Thank you, GW. All right, so bone swords on the uh, swarm lord because he's still swinging a vehicle. 
because he just feels like he's rolling that way. Everything hits. Mm-hmm. And fives. There they are, two. Two. On the, uh... Thing. Do you, what kind of, what's the timer? On the void shield? Yeah. I think we actually get the armor save for whatever reason. Yeah. There's a four up armor save. No, it's minus three. Oh, so okay. it takes it. Alright, so 2d6. So it's three, <laughs> it's three wounds. Three wounds? <laughs> oh, man. So he's down to four. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> He'll die eventually. Alright, so end of Tyranid turn four. Yeah. So we are in Imperial Guard turn four. Or wait, I think this was our turn five. So yeah, it's our turn five. Yeah. Um, so Imperial Guard turn five. Um, get it. Alright, cool. Yeah, so at this point, I really think I'm going to just concede, right? Um, because if I back up my Wyvern, he can't shoot. Um, I was really hoping I could shoot and try to get another kill point. And obviously the Priest isn't going to be able to, to wipe out your... Yeah, and now it's four left and everything else coming around the table. So, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, it was definitely, you know, an interesting game. I think the big thing to sort of talk about, and you can kind of say in your comments, is that our points values were, were right along the same page. The power values were, were way different. Um, and we can and, talk about it in the, the post game a little bit too. Exactly. So, well, cool. Well, good game, man. Good game. All right. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that game of Tyranids versus Imperial Guard. Yeah, it was a it was a tough match, man. I mean, it's. Uh, you you played eighth edition eighth edition one game right? Uh, I played a lot of this? I played okay. a lot of eighth yeah, edition yeah, yeah. games so far, kind yeah, of yeah. testing out in the water, so yeah. to speak. Still figuring out exactly what works with Tyranids, yeah. what doesn't. Um, I've been surprised every single game I play mm-hmm. what works and what doesn't so far. Um, I still haven't really found kind of a niche yet. Okay. What about yourself with the guard? Yeah, I mean, really the biggest things is you know the tanks getting charged and then being in that combat and then mm-hmm. having to back up and not be able to shoot, right? Yeah. At least, you know, when you, uh, at least in the last edition, you can back up, pull out of combat, and then just shoot the, the, the remaining shooting yep. phase. But obviously you can't really do that in this edition. Yeah, I mean, uh, Tyranids have um, a couple really good tricks for sleeves for dealing mm-hmm. with like an Imperial Guard or a Tau. Um, with the Swarm Lord's ability for Hive Commander, he can really just get into somebody's face guaranteed first turn yep. because he can just make himself run mm-hmm. the nine inches. So even if he starts nine inches away, he's there. Yeah. Um, it is a large points investment to get it. You're over 400 points to get him in yeah. a pod. Um, you know, you're over, you're close to 440. Yeah. So it is a big point sink, but you do get to deliver like the stud of your army in there right away. Yep. Um, so it's a really nice thing. And if you combo that out with like some lictors or some other like really high sure. pressure things like. Um, you know, in this edition, the Harpies and Hive Crones fly 30 inches. So even though I really wasn't doing a lot of damage to your tanks, yeah. I'm preventing you from shooting at full exactly. ballistic skill. Exactly. And then that first turn of Salt, too, you know, I didn't really have that many turns to just shoot at you before you got to me, yep. you know? Whereas previous editions, 7th edition especially, you know, I, I could at least bank on having two turns of shooting. Exactly. Right? So. And, and the, you know, a lot of the t- things with this game as well, too, you know, it, w- it would have been interesting sort of who gets to go first always, mm-hmm. you know, steal yep. the initiative. If you steal the initiative, the game completely flips around. Because um, then, you know, the entire game, like, Pask never fired at full initiative. Exactly. The whole exactly. time. Exactly. Just always snap shooting with concerns to Overwatch. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So it was, that can really change some things as well. Um, you know, I didn't get to see how the Venom Thropes worked mm-hmm. um, for a lot of different options. So um, it was definitely interesting to see, you know, wherever we're looking, how everything worked out. What for would sure. you think you might have done something, like, different? Definitely. I mean, the biggest thing I would have done is changed up my list. So, you know, the Bulgrins were probably the biggest heavy hitters. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I'm going to probably bring another unit of those. Um, I'm going to probably put kind of a, a bubble wrap around my tanks, right? Okay. That way, when you go to charge in, you hit the Bulgrins, they have a couple rounds of combat. Yep. And then I can still shoot, even if you pull back out of that combat, yeah. right? So, what and, about you? And I, Yeah, and I think, to, you know, to go off your point real quick, too, you yeah. know, that's one of those 8th edition things. We're still not used exactly. to being able to get charges off when you deploy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe instead of having the guard units, if you were to just put them in the front and just do, like, a single man rank, I can't get to your tanks. Exactly. Um, yep. So my one shot doesn't really work nearly as well yep. um, as it's normally going to do. So that's, sure. like, that's one thing. For me, everything um, went pretty smoothly yep. for the whole part. Um, some really interesting close combat yeah, roles yeah, and forgetting right. Swarmlord yeah, of Strength yeah, yeah, 8 yeah. in the beginning was definitely yeah. um, some interesting stuff. <clears throat> I think the biggest thing 
for me for this edition is the fact that Tyranids can get so far forward. For sure. You have so to really forward. try to figure out like, uh, what do you want to leave behind? What do you not want to leave behind? Um, the Hive Tyrant went from being a beat stick to, I've played one, at least one in every single game, and I've sort of been underwhelmed for sure. every single game that we get to. Um, they're great for kind of chasing down infantry now, mm -hmm. but that's it. Um, they're not really going to be damaging tanks on a regular yeah, yeah, basis. Yeah. Um, high toughness models, low save models, they're really not going to be doing a lot of stuff yeah. with them. Um, so I can't find the niche for them yet, but, but once again, I the Exocrine in every single game has been the MVP with its change to the distance and range of its gun. Sure. Now that it's 36, and with our deployments kind of changing a little bit from 40k, it can really cover most of the board and shoot twice. And it's got a higher point value than, se or than seventh, which is weird. Um, because it wasn't a star in seventh, but it's just so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than it is now. Yeah. So, well, yeah, cool. yeah. I think our final point total came out to be thirteen two. Okay. So yeah, it was yeah. a great game. Um, you know, I think the power levels, you know, points. I think they're pretty pretty accurate for the most part. I mean, we'll have to see and change up strategies and try again some other time. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think you know, I, I think definitely an interesting thing is we could bring the exact same lists, mm -hmm. sure. and if you went first see what happens just to, test it out, yeah. just to kind of test it out to see because um you know that points level was right on but that power level what was your power level again i think it was like 92 or something yeah. like that and yeah. mine was you know like 75. yeah exactly good 15 you know exactly. 17 point difference yeah. and when you're looking at like a lot of the power levels like a 17 point power level like that's essentially the, the whole swarm lord is a 15 point power level yeah that's so crazy. that's such a big difference when you're looking at those models yeah. and then you know we had that opposite result It'll be really interesting to see how like tournaments do stuff and everything else as they go forward. Yeah. But um, yeah, let us know in the comments what you thought yeah, about the sure. game. We'll run one back probably soon to kind of see if Josh gets to go first, how it would have played differently. For sure, for sure. And uh, let us know what else you want to see. Cool. Yeah, good game, man. Good game, man. So uh, we're Purge the Alien. Uh, follow, like, subscribe on all forms of social media, and let us know in the video what you guys want up next. <laughs>